6.30. Additions to the agenda. We have two on the site board memo. One is the agreement for James Barlow. The other is discussion of the Worcester Select Board email that the guy uh, John Keating called me about this evening. Bruce was nice enough to put it on the edition. And uh, I think we have some information that John Keating uh, forwarded us. Do we not? Bruce? Yeah, there's a yeah. Uh, uh, email. Yeah. So we got an email that will explain what this is all about. So we'll fit that in on other business or wherever we can. Um, the next thing we have is review of minutes, March 7th. We have any comments on the minutes? I, I read them. I move to approve them as written. Judith, can you hear us? Good. I'll second that. I heard more. Yeah, we have a second. Any further discussion, though, about the minutes? Okay. Um, all in favor? Please say aye. 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 Is it to approve them? Yes. Yeah. Aye. Aye. <laughs> we have five ayes. The ayes have carried it. Um, the next item is public comment. Do I see any public here? Um, I don't. There's Bob. What's that? Oh, is that public? Yeah. Oh, is that Mr. Public? <laughs> <laughs> it's Mr. Public. We're just, we're, just, we're just viewing. Enjoy. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I believe that's Scott Hess. Um, picture's not that good. He's probably here for the planning commission stuff. Okay. Uh, B, it's 6.40. We're a couple minutes ahead of schedule. But... We have the state police waiting patiently. Conversation with one state police. Se consideration of contract renewal. Before you do that, you want to talk to Jeff and tell him the same thing you just told Eric. Where's he? Oh. Okay. So, Jeff, I can't really see him. But Hang on. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it's definitely Bonnie. Yeah. That's why I didn't see him. He was behind the. Hey Jeff, can you hear us? You're muted. The little hand means it's out. We'll figure it out. I'll just tell him. All right, he can't hear us. He can hear you. He can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jeff. Hello. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to pass on the information about the shade tree preservation plan. We're not considering the plan tonight. All we're doing is trying to schedule it, schedule the item on our agenda so people can tune in and discuss it. So tonight, it, it isn't on the agenda as far as discussing a plan. It's only on there to discuss the time to discuss it. So um, we want the public to tune in on this plan uh, to discuss it, but we're not discussing it tonight. Okay, you got it. All right, so now we'll move back to B, conversation with Boston State Police. What do you guys have to say? <laughs> uh, I'll, uh, I'll start by saying good okay. evening. Um, I am uh, Lieutenant David White, the uh, station commander at the, at the Middlesex Barracks. I'll start by um, apologizing for my casual attire, but the, the biggest part of my day today was uh, doing uh, something that got me a little bit dirty, but for a good cause, we're collecting vests to send to, uh, to Ukraine, so that was what I was doing for the most for the better part of the day, so mm. I wouldn't look nearly as nice as uh, Sergeant Warner here if, if I had uh, been in my uniform. Well, um, we apologize for our casual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're good. Thanks for doing that. Yeah. Oh yeah, you bet. Um, so here with me is uh, Sergeant Bill Warner. He's um, been uh, in Middlesex temporarily for the uh, last year plus. Mm -hmm. um, he officially transferred um, what, just about the first of the year yeah. to okay. us, and he will be uh, managing the contract uh, for East Montpelier 
uh, moving forward, um, assuming that we agree to the terms of the contract that I have here. Uh, Mr. That and yep, should be the same as the uh, the draft I sent over yep. um, earlier. Yep. Um, so just uh, you know, this has been another challenging year for us. Um, obviously, we're hopeful. We're starting to, to get a little bit back to normal, um, just in terms of the uh, the contract uh, as written. There, it's for another uh, 20 hours per month, um, same as the uh, the last couple of years. Um, it seems that our, our staffing levels have um, really pushed us to uh, an interesting time. We actually have mandated overtime shifts that sergeants and troopers are required to work, uh, which in my 19 years I've never seen such a thing. Uh, but our staffing levels are, are so low that it's, it's a requirement that everyone, uh, sergeants and troopers, are required to work overtime mm. shift coverage shifts. So obviously um, with our work rules, we're only allowed to work one of our days off um, in an overtime status. So that pulls some of our folks away from some of the elective overtime, such as um, a lot of our DUI time and our, our uh, um, click it or ticket stuff and the uh, the contracts, the local town contracts. Um, I believe we worked 60, 60 to 70 percent of the hours um, last year, or at least from from uh, April one of 21 until coming up on the uh, at the end of the year now uh, for our, our contract um, time period. So not. Not quite back to uh, back to working all of them, and nowhere near where we were at one point in time. We were working 40 hours a month, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's uh, it's important for us, as I'm hopeful that it's as important for the folks of East Montpelier to continue to have us uh, in the town. And um, I think uh, Sergeant Warner's got some some numbers to to throw at you from for the last uh, 12 months. Yeah, it looks like you're 81 percent. So okay. It's better. Yeah, I was giving you credit for the last date was February 12th, so I cut it off there. Okay. And did the percentage off that. Yeah, and I think I know we've had some of the some of the guys really jumping onto it here uh, recently towards the end. So I think we started running those numbers a, a little bit maybe earlier than you did, but I I can honestly say your bookkeeping is probably better than <laughs> anything that we have on the. Uh, on the state police side of things, so um, I'll hold you to that, Bruce, and thank you. And, and just to be clear, those are um, extra hours besides what the state police would be here normally. The state police would be here anyway, you know, oh, we're driving to East Montpelier. Right. But these are additional hours Indigenous. that you put in, touring the town around, or doing whatever, stakeouts or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I have certainly feeling that's adequate for us, but mm -hmm. a lot of the else feels. I think it's fine. I, I'm happy you're doing this because I was reading recently about all the, uh, the Cadillac converters have been taken oh, off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like in, in, in their remote, somewhat remote parking rides, like in Waterbury, is pretty remote. Mm -hmm. And the one in Williamstown is pretty remote, but they could they could do it anywhere. And it's nice to have someone. So they're going to have parking rides? Yeah. yeah. Whoa. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't, Allegedly. Well, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure if you guys are aware of that, but one of our guys. Um, he wasn't working the contract, but coming through East Montpelier, saw a, a car acting pretty fishy right here, and actually caught someone in the act of cutting Cadillac converters really? off oh, of wow. vehicles here. Right here. Right here. Huh. So um, yeah, it's it's. I think that there wasn't a market for that. That people. Oh no. No, I mean I understand that there was, but I mean who's who's accepting these obviously stolen goods at this point? Well, how do you know they're stolen? Because yeah. if somebody gives you. A, Wow, if you show up with, how many people are going to show up with like 50 <laughs> yeah, or yeah. Well, they might just show up with three. Okay. Yeah, they might. Be, no, but the, point is, the point is, they keep, they keep track, they keep track of, uh, at yeah. the junkyard, they keep track of who brought them in, and so they have that data. And I guess how one of them got caught is because he had someone else take, take the material over, you know, take the catalytic converters over for him to the junkyard. And that person, I guess, test, you're going to testify against mm -hmm. them. So that was in the paper, but. Well, I've known people that were legitimate bring in, oh, Seth, what are you doing that truck car out back? I'm like, I, I would like to get rid of it. He's like, oh, I'm going to cut the Cadillac converter out. I'll get rid of it. 
Okay, we'll go ahead. I mean, you know. I told him to take the car, too. Well, no, they <laughs> did. We've got the state police here coming. Yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we have a few more minutes. Okay. <laughs> so, you, did you want to go over your data? Or have we oh, just covered enough for you? No, no, he's going to go over his data. Let him do it. <laughs> well, I mean. Um, <laughs> but just keep it short, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> we, we want to talk more about catalytic conversion. This is better, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry to get you off on this. <laughs> uh, I think you guys may have posted this on your website, but this uh, sheet that I have is probably the same sheet you folks have. Uh, just summarizing our last 11 months in the town. It's not exclusively for the town contract. It's for uh, our regular shift, so to speak, as well mm -hmm. as the town contract. Uh, generally speaking, we're um, I'm putting the asterisk approximate with this, but approximately 341 cases uh, in the town, uh, 24 arrests, and 167 traffic stops. Uh, a majority of those arrests were driving license suspended, DUI were the uh, the top two arrest categories, if you will. Uh, as far as like the contract itself, uh, just approximate crunching the numbers about uh, in the first 11 months, roughly 12 hours per month. And that's normally between the troopers that choose to work at, we normally have three to four troopers per month, the averaging 12 hours per month through the last year. And just to be clear, are these stats that you're presenting, are they just on the hours that you're working on the overtime shifts, especially for the county of East Montpelier, or are these all state police? No, you just said that. Nope. These are for East okay. Montpelier, but it's for all of our involvement in all East Montpelier, oh, okay. contract and okay. regular. Yeah. Seth? Judith? Oh, hi, Judith. Hi there. Um, I, was, I was just curious, um, given that you know, obviously the BSP, the Vermont State Police, can't be here as much as we would want them or they would want to. I'm wondering if you have any recommendations for what we as a town can do to help, you know, provide for or enhancing public safety um, or promoting public safety. Um, so we, we have looked at that. Um, at this point, we felt that the state police contract at 20 hours a month was adequate, um, and we haven't had any feedback to say we needed more coverage by other law enforcement. That, that wasn't my question. Oh. Um, my question was to the two officers, um, oh. what they can recommend. We as a town, understanding that the Vermont State Police isn't here, um, you know, what we as townspeople and as we as the governing body for the town can do to promote public safety, to educate our residents to promote public safety. Any recommendations they have? Um, I, would, I would say uh, probably the biggest thing that, that I've seen um, in these days of, of social media, a lot of people will turn to Facebook or... Reporting in progress. Um, Facebook or some other form of, of social media and, and put it out there and they never actually call us and tell us that something is going on. Um, and it's more of like, you know, the, the front porch forums and things like that. The, the word will get out to the people that are involved in those, in those forums or are, you know, friends with those people. But a lot of times uh, there, there's there's a number of conversations that are going around within the town, and we don't necessarily uh, we're not we're not involved in those conversations because no one actually calls us. Um, you know, it's it's hard for us to to combat anything that we don't know about. So um, that's and it's it's gotten a little bit worse and progressively over time, just because so many people are are more comfortable getting on their computers and making a complaint on the VSP website, but that gets rooted to someone else who then has to get access to it, and then it's days, it could be days before that message ends up getting back to us. Yes, the, there is an outlet there for, for those types of, of reporting mechanisms, but it's not always um, efficient. So just picking up the call, picking up the phone, and, and giving us a call to let us know that something's going on is is always the best uh, the best avenue. Thank you. So did you want to continue your number punching there? Um, <laughs> no, that's pretty that's pretty much all I had. But uh, just kind of echoing off the lieutenant's last statement, um, 
encouraging people to call as timely as possible. A lot of times people feel like they need to have every detail or yeah. kind of a big picture of whatever reason they're calling for. Uh, if it's something that's concerning enough, then, then try to encourage them to call as soon as possible. Um, and when you say call, are you meaning 911 or is there another type of um, access that you'd recommend people call for? Um, maybe, uh, you know, a non-emergency, but a, you know, um, imminent or a trend that's being observed by a neighborhood. Yeah, certainly not. Uh, obviously, we'll we'll uh, leave 911 for the for the uh, the emergencies, but um, our no, our normal non-emergency line is 229-9191. Uh, that gets you to um, a a dispatcher that is sitting at a desk uh, exclusively working uh, the Middlesex area. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, comment and a question. Uh, I serve as animal control officer in uh, the town, and I just want to say that uh, you know, most of the calls to us uh, we handle internally, but in those cases where I've worked with state police, it's been a very good working relationship, and I really appreciate uh, uh, all the openness that, uh, that you guys have had and cooperation that I've gotten. Okay. Um, the, the question is, um, you're talking about everybody being mandated to work overtime shifts now. So could you give us an idea of how many hours per week you are mandated to work now as a minimum? Uh, so it's, it's based on the, the openness or the availability of, of shift coverage, and it applies for, for Middlesex, it applies to the entire northern half of, of the state. So as, um, as our scheduling sergeants are, are making out the schedule for the next month, when, when we go below what we call our minimum, uh, our minimum number of people that, that we need to, uh, to really, at that point, run defense is all we're doing if we're at our minimum staffing. But if, if barracks are dropping below that minimum number, we have an overtime portal that all the troopers and sergeants have access to. Those overtime shifts go on the portal and um, you're required to work at least one overtime shift within a two month time period. And if you don't, and there's other shifts available that haven't been taken, there's actually um, an individual with the state police who goes down the list and see who has not worked an overtime shift. And then at that point, they will be mandated to work that, that shift. So it's not necessarily a specific number, um, but it's it's based on shifts that are open throughout the northern half of the state. Right. Thank you. Okay. So I think that the uh, next item here is to consider the contract, and if we want to renew it, we should make a motion to. I move to renew it. Okay. I second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 There you go. Yeah. So you can pass it to me because I think my name's on it. Oh. <laughs> okay. So I guess that motion also was authorizing the town administrator to sign it on behalf of the club. Yeah, clients, agents, names, and signature. Yeah, I think I, I wasn't sure if, if you were still here, so I, I left I'm it. I'm still here. I'm not sure who the client's <laughs> agent is. <laughs> <laughs> you want to pass that down to Bruce? He's pulling out his paw and expect something. <laughs> So let's keep them happy and give them oh. something. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, okay. I oh. think that covers that. Yeah. Does we have more questions for each other? There is a second page, so that signature might be on the second page. Yeah. So no, it's right here. It's just oh, okay. my name had been in the, the draft one, but it's not on this one, so technically yeah. you won't. Oh, okay. You sign it. <laughs> so, no, it says Bruce Johnson there. But the not on this one. But this I is the original. One. So, which one do you, you, you want? You sign one? the original. Okay. <laughs> I don't want That's that one. Draft. That's yeah. his. <laughs> but don't confuse him. <laughs> I am signing in the there other spot, and I will put my name in the other spot. Okay. Very good. Works for me. Yeah. Company name, got it. I just wanted to say thank you for the work that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, and thank you for the other work you're doing by collecting dust. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. 
live in perilous times. Thank you for doing what you do. Okay. I think we're going to move to the next item since we have so many things to do. Don Welch. It's uh, the State Police Community Advisory Board report that should be Don. Um, he's behind the. He's like behind the. All right, we will drop down. Okay. Okay, Don, you're you're on board. Can you hear us? I'm here. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah. thank, you. Finally, uh, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. In, finally, in response to Judas' question, there, uh, we have a question in terms of. How can we, as a community advisory board, assist the town, the towns, in uh, public safety? Uh, our original goal was to provide a, a conduit between the town and the state police, and that has, uh, you know, over the years. It, it has kind of weakened, and we're at the point now where we're trying to determine, do we have a role? Do we have a, a need out there that we need to pursue? And we're going to be having a meeting. Well, it's it's been scheduled and postponed several times over the last uh, three months and so we're looking for a purpose out there or whether we just need to disband so uh, if anybody has any ideas or things that we can help to accomplish uh, we would love to hear them and, and pursue them because it, there's a number of towns. I mean, we've got probably eight, probably no more than eight out of the 18 towns that are represented because people are losing interest in what we do. So um, this is kind of, we're, we're at a watershed point where either we continue or we disband. Uh, so that's about all I have to report. Uh, we have done a lot over the years in terms of uh, we've learned a lot. But uh, one of the things that we have considered doing it is we did 18 years ago. We put out a, a survey to townspeople to say, okay, what what do you think about public safety in your town? What is what do you one of the questions we had at that time was what is your expectation for response? Uh, most case I think the most of the response is well within five minutes or whatever. And that was not realistic. Uh, it is probably even less realistic today than it was then. We had the uh, Neighborhood Watch program that we promoted for a long time. That was, it started before social media was as active and as many opportunities. Uh, that now you can because we were just heard that people are not necessarily calling as often, you know, immediately directly as they as they wish they would, um, and so the question is, you know, is that can, can that be modified and and made more useful in some way? So those are some of the questions in front of us, but we're we're partly looking for input from the towns, the townspeople, and so forth as to whether we can serve some useful purpose or we're just extra out there. 
So maybe I with the really any comments. <laughs> no, I was just wondering when you said yeah, maybe you're becoming uh, irrelevant or we've evolved past the neighborhood watch because of the social media aspect of things where people do more connection that way rather than in person calling I'm having trouble hearing Sam. What's that? I'm having trouble oh. hearing you, Sam. I'm just I'm just wondering if we've evolved past your role and that's what you're thinking also. In that that's we're doing working. more people are doing more things electronically rather than going through you folks. They deal with it by social media. And that's the neighborhood new neighborhood watch is via electronics. So yes. I think um, there are those are separate issues. Um, what we've heard can you hear me, Don? Yes. Okay. Um, I think we're hearing a question from Don as to whether the police and state police and community advisory board itself is worth continuing. And then he was also talking about one of the projects that they had earlier on was promoting these neighborhood watch groups, which are maybe less relevant these days with the social media. Um, as for the uh, advisory board, I'm wondering, Don, if you have reached out to Black Lives Matter or any other organization that has been involved in the robust conversation that's happening here in Vermont on equity and policing to see if uh, your group could be a platform for uh, them to make their concerns known to the state police through that way and, and uh, get a good dialogue going. Uh, we have not. Um, that is something to discuss. Okay. I, I think um, that if you are wondering whether to continue or not, that that is a sign that people are relatively uh, contented with the, the way the state police are doing their job, or, or they don't know about your organization, they don't know to, to rally your bars to, uh, to um, send feedback to the state police. But I think that um, you know, having you guys around is helpful in case uh, there is an incident or a series of incidents that gets people up in arms and wanting to have civilian input into local state police actions and input and insight, you know, two-way dialogue. So I, I would encourage the organization to continue to exist even if it seems like um, you know, activity levels are, are low for the time being. Our main activity for the last few years has been to provide a gathering place for the troopers and their families and uh, other members of public uh, service safety to gather and a pic at a picnic in, up in uh, Waterbury. And that's been very successful and I think that it served a good purpose and I've, this year was even more uh, I think more effective than it's been in a few years because we had old families there, kids, family, people, wives and husbands and so forth had not necessarily seen the mem family members of other uh, troopers, which I thought was a, a, a nice, you'd see groups of them get together and the kids playing together and so forth, which was nice. I I would hate, kind of I rather not lose that because I think it's a it, we call it the Trooper Appreciation Day and I think it's it is worth just you. I, I, I was I was supporting what you're saying I I, I think following up on um, Carl's point I, maybe another opportunity might be outreach to U32 or even the elementary school about you know providing education or information to students about the role that VSP plays and also what are some of the security needs or the issues that young people are facing. Um, you know, I, I have a young adult child who, you know, her anxiety is 
you know, really high given the state of the world um, and feeling safe at home, I think, you know, would be helpful um, to people. But there might also be other issues like Carla addressed, you know, Black Lives Matter or trans kids or other um, groups that want to make sure that, um, you know, that they're being protected and that their concerns and issues are being heard. And I think it provides an opportunity for young people to get to know law enforcement and vice versa. Um, and that promotes, you know, community interaction and who knows, maybe at the appreciation picnic, you know, young people can be serving the food or coordinating games or whatever. But I, I would agree with Carl. I think if we can keep the organization um, and maybe, you know, do some more outreach about what purpose it might serve or what, what people in the community might want it to serve, what purpose they might want it to serve. Um, because I think a lot of people don't know about it. I think that might be part of the issue. Okay. Those are good ideas. Could I just? Yeah. Thank oh, you. I'm so, we're running out of time here, but okay, Kyle wants sure. to say something. So after that, I think we're going to have to move on. Yeah, so. Thank, yeah. thank you, Seth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you for that, Judith. And, uh, and Donna, if all you do each year is to have that picnic, I, you know, I think that would be great. Uh, just to, to keep it as a holding action, so to speak. Um, and it's not only that the troopers' families are getting to know each other, but uh, you are building a relationship with those troopers. So if anybody in this community ever has an issue that they want to bring to the state police, they can go to you, and you're not some outsider coming in. You're someone who, who already has a, a relationship. So go for it, please. I appreciate the feedback, and I, I wish we would get more feedback like that from some of the other select boards uh, around. Uh, I would like, to, if we could get back up to 10 to 12 out of the 18 towns, that would be, feel, feel like it's much more uh, representative. Well, it sounds like, you, you know, the, uh, Carl and Judith have thrown some good ideas out there to you, so maybe you can build on that a little bit in your other presentations to other select boards. I'm just throwing that out there. But, um, but thank you, Don, for coming in. And we've just got to move to the next one. We've got such a packed agenda that I don't want to cut you off. But Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to well, get these ideas. Thank you, Don. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Welcome. Um, so the next item on our agenda is conversation with Central Vermont Prevention Coalition on April Community Forum on Drugs and Alcohol. So we have someone here, I believe. Ava and Olivia. Ava. Yes, we're, and Olivia. Olivia and I are on Zoom. Yes. Thanks for having us here. Yes, well, thank um, you for tuning in. And we're ready to hear from you. Okay, great. We'll keep it short because it sounds like you have a lot going on. Yes, we do. We have. <laughs> We've been to each Montpelier before, but I um, I know you have a few new select board members, so we'll just quickly reintroduce ourselves um, and then talk to you about this event that we have coming up um, that we'd appreciate your support with. So um, my name is Eva Zaret. I'm a public health specialist at Central Vermont Medical Center and the project coordinator for the Central Vermont Prevention Coalition, which is um, which we'll you'll hear about in just a minute. Um, and I'm here with Olivia, who is serving with us um, as an AmeriCorps Vista, um, as a rural community organizer. The coalition um, is an interdisciplinary collaboration of professional organizations, um, state agencies, and nonprofits working in the fields of substance use prevention, harm reduction and disease prevention, treatment, recovery, and some other areas like restorative justice, law enforcement, housing, youth services, so we have broad representation at the table um, of fields and factors that are directly involved in substance use and also um, sort of peripherally touched in some way. And the hospital serves as a foundational backbone member of the organization. Um, the coalition was founded in 2017 and has been meeting monthly every year since then. Our mission is to create a harmonized and stigma-free stigma system of care in Central Vermont where there's no wrong door, there's no wrong time to get help and support for substance use disorders and to prevent the initiation of substance use, particularly among youth. 
um, and the participation of people and families who have experienced the harms of substance use is really vital to our work. So in 2019, we received a three-year grant from the federal government to address the opioid crisis in all the towns in Central Vermont, especially the rural towns. Um, and one initiative that's come out of that um, is the organization of these drug and alcohol community forums throughout our service area, which is primarily Washington County and a few towns in Orange County. The forums are um, organized by supervisory union um, because we ha that's how we get the best data that we can share with the town. And we have completed two so far, one for sort of like the Northfield, Williamstown, Orange Washington School District, um, and one for Montpelier Roxbury. Um, and our next one, um, Olivia will tell you about in just a minute. But I just want to say lastly that these forums come at a really critical time because drug and alcohol use um, and overdose deaths have increased dramatically during the pandemic in every part of Vermont. Um, and youth substance rates, um, substance use rates are um, increasing. And this is a really good chance for the community, parents, um, anybody to come and ask questions and start a conversation um, and get organized to make some efforts in their community. Yeah, and so our next forum um, for the Washington County Supervisory Union will be on Tuesday, April 5th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. And it's right now um, just on Zoom, but we're working to make it a potential hybrid option, um, which we will um, make sure to communicate if that does become an option between now and then. Um, but we wanted to be here tonight to ask if there are any questions that we can answer now or that you would want us to be able to answer or address at the forum. Um, and if there's any insight on how we can further promote this event, that would also be super helpful. Um, but we really hope to see you all there. All right, so who's got questions for these two young ladies or two presenters? Questions, comments for Eva? Um, oh, here's one. What, what additional support, or do you need additional support from us um, before the event, or at the event? Um, we, won't, we don't need any additional support at the event. Um, we basically have a panel of experts who are going to be there to um, inform their resources they have available, answer questions from the community members, and um, we would really encourage you all to attend and you know, by word of mouth in your community, spread it, um, the word, and that would be great support, um, but that's really it. And this is just on Facebook, right? It's not in person? Um, it is, the, uh, it's currently on Zoom. Um, yep, so our, we have a Facebook event um, that um, has the Zoom link in it, and it's also on our social medias, and we're trying to make it a, um, in person, so if you all have any suggestions of in-person locations, I'm, um, currently waiting to hear back from the school to see if we potentially have it there. Um, but if that is something that becomes an opportunity, um, I will be sure to send out an email and um, we would make that clear. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. And what time of day is it going to be? I don't see it. Six o'clock. Oh, six o'clock. Six to seven thirty. Oh, yeah. Six to seven thirty p.m. Yeah. So are one of the are any of the panel members are they treatment providers who or folks who might talk about treatment issues? Yeah, we'll have um, the lead for treatment from Central Vermont Medical Center for adults, and then we also have a youth treatment provider who's coming to answer questions. A lot of parents have questions about um, tobacco and cannabis use, so it's particularly he can be helpful. Um, around those areas. So um, again, I just want to reiterate that these are organized by supervisory union, but they're not only for youth prevention or, or youth focused um, areas. We are really happy to answer any questions that anybody might have about the sector in general. We just can get really good data from the youth risk behavior survey that's organized by supervisory union. Um, so we will be with a variety of towns that I know are sort of spread out from one another. Um, 
but we're really hopeful that this can be um, a good opportunity for the community. Please feel free to email us any questions that you might have. Olivia will be in touch. Um, and we really appreciate your time tonight. Well, thank you. Okay. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Anybody have any more questions for Olivia or Riva? All right. Well, thank you for tuning in, and uh, we'll see what happens. Thanks. Yep. Thank, thank you for all Thanks. your efforts. We appreciate it. Uh, okay. So that's done. Next item is North Street Sparrow Farm Road Ashby Management Project. Consideration of UCF carry for canopy pro program grant. Okay. So we have a grant application, is that it? Mm -hmm. We have a grant agreement. Mm -hmm. Agreement? Yeah. Uh, we already got the grant, did we not? We, yep. This is getting the grant right this minute. Yes. And you approve me to sign this and send it in, we get the grant. Okay. <laughs> I move to approve you to do that. I second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, do have it. Unanimously, we have the pass. Who's, did anybody have to sign this? Yeah, me. So we also authorized Bruce Johnson, the town administrator, to sign off yeah. on the grant that, that was part of the... Oh, oh I missed it. <laughs> I was just way ahead of you guys. <laughs> I was way ahead of you guys. <laughs> no, way behind. <laughs> <laughs> and the next bullet here is consideration of North Street project contract or bid results. Okay. So there was one that was considerably cheaper, it looks like. Yeah, is there somebody who's going to present the results to us and sum up what they were? Uh, I'm just looking at or do you want Do you want us to just jump into questions? Um, yeah, I mean, it, I, I can just briefly cover it. I mean, we had three bids, um, Nadia Bird from Foxfire was the low bidder. Um, they did the work on the county road last year. Um, I would note that there, there is quite a spread between the low bid and the next two bids, which are around 41,000, so roughly $10,000 difference. Uh, so definitely uh, Foxfire is the low bid. Um, the cost of tree removal um, this project is fairly similar in scope to the county road project that we did last year in terms of the number of trees, tree diameters. Um, obviously, big difference in roadways in terms of working on the county road versus North Street and Sparrow Farm Road. Um, nonetheless, um, it's a, a more expensive project. Um, so it's basically $10,000 more than paid for the, uh, the county road project. Um, so we're kind of uh, scratching our head a bit, heads a bit um, to kind of try to understand why the per tree cost um, has gone up in each of the three projects, uh, starting with U32 County Road and now with uh, North Street. And uh, it's higher than the rate of inflation, I'd say that. But well, the rate of inflation is <laughs> worthless. Yeah. I try to apply the rate of uh, inflation to some of my costs. It's like, this is not, this is ridiculous. Yeah. We have costs to go up 50%, not 6%, not 7%. Yeah. Judith? Yeah. It's crazy. Um, how did Foxfire do on the county road project? I think overall we were really pleased about the work <coughs> that they did. Uh, yeah. And Paul being a county road resident um, worked really close with Nate and, and his group and mm -hmm. um, and Guthrie and the road crew worked with them as well and I think overall we we're super pleased with the work they did. Um, I, I've had Nate do work for me and he's always done a really good job Nate. Look, they, uh, they're, they're real professional in their work too. Plus he's, he's right here in between Plainfield and East Montpelier anyway. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. and I think he's in town. So and I think last year there was a big plus. difference between like Mar the guy from Marshfield and someone else, and, yeah, and, right. and so I think the difference is bigger because of inflation. But basically, it's still a difference. But yeah, I no, think no, he's it, saying the cost per yeah. tree is up. Yeah, right. doesn't matter who's yeah. doing the bid. Right. Yeah, but I'm just thinking that. Uh, but if uh, that 
a lot of times when you see a, a difference like that, you're thinking, hey, somebody's cutting corners somewhere. But I know with, with the Foxfire, they, they don't appear to be cutting any corners. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, one thing, we're, we're sort of rethinking our five-year plan that we had presented to you a few months ago in terms of thinking we could do an incredible amount of work mm -hmm. spending $20,000 a year. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously mm -hmm. um, the numbers for costs are going up. So the numbers of people and the type of organizations that bid on a project make a big difference too, and none of the big people bid on any of this stuff. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's just like two or three in Hardwick and there's one down in Montpelier and none of those people bid on it because they're doing line work for for everyone, you know, cleaning up their lines and everything. So right. probably that's has some part to play in that as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, you kind of wonder if um, the cost will come down because we are dealing with a, a bubble and who knows what will happen. And like, just going to what you said, you know, five year plan, 20,000 a year, whatever. You don't really know. It's hard mm -hmm. to know. Until we get there. Close we don't to know until we get there. Yeah. I mean, it's not likely the cost will just keep going like this. It's not sustainable, really. So uh, Jeff, Jeff, one of the um, higher bids broke out the cost uh, for the trees themselves and also for road safety. So I didn't go back and double check the RFP. Can we assume that with the low bid as well, there is a road safety component built yeah, into that, that it? Yeah, that would include the, the traffic control it is yeah. included in the okay. other two bids. Okay. Michael um, from Vermont Arborist. They're, they're the group that did the U32 project, so I think he perhaps just wanted to highlight uh, the cost of traffic control, which is four, was $4,000 for his project, so it's just kind of noteworthy that that's a, a pretty good size expense right there. Yeah. For them. Yeah. So it doesn't sound like there'd be any reason that we wouldn't take the Fox Fire low, lowest bid. Right. Doesn't sound like to me either. No. Do we need a motion on that? I think we do. <laughs> so you want to say something? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I would uh, just say that <clears throat> I think the chances that the price per tree is going to go down considerably are, don't look good in my view based on what I know and <clears throat> what I'm trying to learn uh, because we happen to be ahead of the eight ball here. <clears throat> uh, and so, you know, people are, are, we're asking them to bid on something that they're probably not used to bidding on jobs like this. They're, most of these outfits are more apt to be cutting two or three trees in somebody's yard instead of 200 trees up the side of the road. And so <clears throat> I suspect we're seeing that they're finding it's costing them more, purely aside from what's happened just in the last two or three months. <clears throat> but we're also, we now have the bug in town that we know we do. And <clears throat> uh, what I'm hearing from other places, <clears throat> and actually right over here in Plainfield, uh, <clears throat> A forester friend of mine says that their the population, which is an, an initial start population, is fairly <coughs> low. That he's now finding that you know they're out marking trees that are infested, <coughs> and you know the population has now started to build up more quickly. And so <coughs> he says uh, he doesn't see how we're going to go back. <laughs> it's just going to be more food on the table for the bugs. And once their population really gets started after the first two or three years, then things speed up. And <clears throat> so if we're in the position that we are right now where we're actually making decent progress, <clears throat> uh, we're going to find that a lot of the other towns around here, if they decide to go this route, you know, and protect the public, traveling public, uh, <clears throat> that there's going to be more competition for the operators that we have. And <clears throat> the prices are going to go up for that reason. They're probably also going to go up because, well, they will, 
because once the trees actually start to die, uh, you know, the recommendations are out there that you don't climb trees. <coughs> and, you know, it's pretty soon it gets to the place where you <laughs> don't cut the trees off either because you can't trust them. They're just snapping off, people getting hurt. I guess there's been people killed. Uh, <coughs> so that doesn't look good in my view. So we either need to <coughs> speed things up and figure out that we're going to have to cover our costs before the price gets into a battle to, <laughs> to hire people to come in here and, and do this work and before the trees get so in such rough shape that we can't, we don't have any choice and we just say, okay, you just keep your eyes open when you're driving down the road and cross your fingers. So, <clears throat> I don't particularly want to get there. I would rather see us get this figured out and, and do what we need to do uh, <clears throat> so that we don't end up with more serious headaches. So there is a motion. We made the motion, but we haven't voted on it. Second. Okay. We have a second. The motion is to approve Foxfire Tree to accept a bid on the flight. And all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. The ayes have it. Um, so, we have that done. I think that we could move to the next item, which is discussion on next steps for shade tree preservation plan. Um, so what I've told people that have come into the office and also tuned in is we're just trying to make a time and a date to discuss this plan on our agenda. Um, and there is a lot of people that would like to tune in, so my suggestion is we make the uh, make some time for it. Now, uh, do we need to consider a larger venue before holding in person meetings again? How much interest is there? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, would this be that. separate from our select board meeting? You would no, have a I was, we were just going to incorporate it into a meeting, but okay. just uh, allocate, you know, an hour or whatever. Okay. As long as it's 20 minutes, obviously. So the fire station, in theory, is going to be available to us starting next month. Okay. They're reviewing, just like we are, yes. orders this month. Right. The board meeting is next week. Yeah. Uh, and we've already asked them for a planning commission hearing at the beginning of May. Yep. And they're expecting to be able to offer the place yep. on its normal right. standing rather than 13 or 14 people. Yeah. So that well, may be available. It's a good idea. Okay. We can have our meeting April. Can we do it in April? They're reviewing it now. <laughs> you can do it. I no, mean, I'm just you've saying. You've got two meetings coming up, both of which have stuff on them already, but you can yeah. create space. Yeah. But would we be able to get into the fire department at that point? You wouldn't be able to for April 4th. So no, you might be able to for the 18th. Meeting, the 18th. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because the 18th, I'm going to be here. I'd like to be here for it rather than the Zoom thing. Yeah. So I'd like to shoot for the 18th. And the good, I uh, like the time. Yeah. An hour, something like that. And it'd be nice if we could do it over there, but if we can't, we'll send it to it again. We could start it a little earlier, so you have a little more time. Yeah, we could start mm -hmm. it earlier at six o'clock. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't know what anyone else thinks, but that good. sounds good. I think that sounds great. Okay. Okay, so that's our goal. So I agree with you, Bruce, for the shade tree preservation plan discussion. For the what? For the shade tree preservation. Yeah. Okay. All that the agenda item tonight was just discussion when we should schedule. It. So okay. The 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 discussion. Okay. All, that's all it is. So we're just trying to make enough time on our agenda and maybe a different place to have it so we have more room for people. Yep. So we think they're doing it all over the fire station if we can on April 18th. Okay. And we'll probably start that meeting a little earlier because we have a lot of stuff to do and we want to allow a lot of time for that. Yep. So, so just out of curiosity, if we can't get the 18th, do you want to aim for the 2nd? Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, sure. Because uh, I don't know how hard we're pushing the fire department. Yeah, I don't either. So, so yeah. Right. It'll go for a second. So you're going to have it <clears throat> in April? Well, we're going to try for April 18th. Okay. Um, but we're trying to do it over the fire station until yeah. more long. Yeah. And uh, if we can't do it on the 18th, because there's, that's scheduled, yep. that room is busy, then we'll try for May 2nd, yep. which is our regular meeting. We're just trying to incorporate it all together. Okay. But I can assure you we will allow enough time for that yep. shade tree preservation plan so everyone has a chance to, to yep. weigh in. Well, that's fine. I'm going to get back. We're boiling right now. Yeah. So. That's good. <laughs> uh, that's fine. <laughs> I, I Before you go, Bruce, mm -hmm. um, I, I know we're just scheduling here, but yeah. if I recall correctly, uh, Bruce, you were not at our earlier discussion no, of, of this. Would it be in order just to ask him to give us a few thoughts right now so we have that? To no, he doesn't have to. No, I, he doesn't have to. Would, <laughs> uh, is it okay if we, if we ask him? We've got a few minutes in the schedule. Nice. Uh, Mike? Yeah, um, I wasn't at the last meeting either. I read about it in the paper. And I, I kind of keep track of things. I'll just say, like to think I do. I, I had no, I, I saw no notice about that hearing? plan. That was a hearing that we had last year. Yeah, right. But I saw, it. was it in the paper? Was it posted? It was, it, it was posted everywhere. We put it on Front Porch Forum. Yeah. It was on Front Porch Forum? Yeah. I, There's been I, a post on the website for three weeks ahead of the meeting. Yeah, it was out there. But, but really, the hearing was important, but nothing has been passed. Right. And the when we have it on our agenda, it's still public. The public can weigh in. Yeah. So in effect, it's like a hearing, in that everyone is welcome to say something, and we will have it uh, enough time on the agenda so everyone has a chance to talk. Okay. So I know the hearing is important, but nothing has been passed. Right. Oh yeah. No, no, I, it was a mandatory hearing. Sure. Yeah, oh yeah. I, I saw yeah. that, and I just was I. I thought, gee, I must have missed yeah. it. I didn't see anything in the paper, and I always kind of look and right. I looked online, and you know, I usually read that front porch forum all the time. So. Yeah, but well, I just want to reassure everyone that yeah. nothing happened. Yeah. And, and I know that's not an official posting site, front porch forum. I don't think it is for the town. It isn't, but the website certainly is. I know, but and in terms of getting information out to people, you yeah, know, engaging people. But it was on front porch forum. Yes. Okay, I, I guess I yeah. missed it. So, I'm, and I just noticed that Callus puts its. Select board agendas on front porch forum. Middlesex does also. So it might be helpful. So have you read the plan? Yeah, I did. When I went back, I went back onto the website and then I read through it. How about Bruce? Have you right. read the plan? Uh, no, I heard it from Colin Blackwell. Right. Okay. But the plan is on the website, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. So I went back and I, there it yeah, was yeah. and I read through it. Well, I was just telling Bruce that if you yeah. wanted to read the plan. So I, I did. To, okay. Yeah. So yeah. when he comes to the meeting on the 18th or 2nd, you know, you've yeah. got information. Yeah. yeah. So it might be good just to advertise it again. You can't put out too much information, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. No, yeah. Sure. That's, uh, it's important that people know, especially yeah. landowners that have land abutting public roads. Yeah, I got a lot of it. So I have a lot of it too. Uh, mm -hmm. Myself. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm excited about having the public weigh in on this important thing. So thank you for coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your interest. Yep. Right. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Bruce. Yeah. Okay. I'll catch you later. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, Paul, I don't, I don't know if you want to talk about the site visit. I mean, we had talked about a site visit with the Yes. Board. For North Street? Yeah. North Street and Sparrow Farm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> I guess we probably got spring weather coming. You folks be happier to <laughs> the weather's nice. Um, <clears throat> so if you want to schedule a time, we could go over and look at the site over there on where Carl and 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 um, no, after mud season. <clears throat> well, well, actually, it doesn't, doesn't have to be. Way. Mud season will be over over here within a few days. The wind is really going yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. But probably, uh, you know, two or three weeks out. So I was just like wondering that. if we could do it in conjunction with April 18th meeting, just meet there early or something. We already made it earlier for so the... We, yeah, we <laughs> the prior yeah, yeah. If we yeah. don't, then we're putting it up until May 2nd. No, well, why don't we do the same visit before April 18th? So we yeah, I just want to be able to be here. I'm not going to be here for, oh, I, I won't be here for the 5th, I but I will be here at 18th. 
I just thought. I mean, you could do a site visit at 5 o'clock on the 18th if you wanted to, and then yeah. hurry over to the fire station. Sure. DRV does that all the time. I'm just trying to line up to That actually might stuff. work well. It worked well, too. I think that on the 18th, maybe if we I'm, met at 5 or something like that. I'm trying not to suck up too many days of town business. You know, we're trying to do it. I'm trying to do it in line with our meetings. Yep. You know, it works well for Amy and myself. I don't know about Carl. So I'm thinking 18. At like what time? You're saying like five. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And where specifically would we meet? North Street and the intersection of North Street and Sparrow. Okay. Well, they, no. You want them down at Jacobs Road, right? Yeah. Oh, you want them at the intersection of Jacobs Road and. Right, right. Which is a whole different ballgame. Yeah, 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 that's right, I'm sorry. Right. Uh, but you can, I mean, the odds are there will be a couple of driveways that are unused, like the pond lot just below <laughs> yeah. uh, where the farm is, Yeah. Uh, where the farmhouse is. Yeah, you can park there. I would recommend, yeah, parking by the trailhead. There's just not a ton of space there for more than a couple of cars safely. Well, yeah. maybe we should this way you can get off the road. road. Three yeah. of us live like right there. Right? Oh, there you go. But there's um, no. You know, there's no sight Not distances down. right yeah, there. Yeah. So I'll do yeah. it virtually. And no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Good luck. <laughs> so there's only going to be not that many of us there. Well, I don't know. It's a public meeting. We might have two dozen people. That's true. <laughs> highly unlikely. <laughs> Okay, I bet we can figure out how to do it. Five o'clock on the evening. Okay. Does that leave enough time to get to um, the either the fire station or the town clerk's office? I think so. I can't believe you're going to be there for more than a half hour. I cannot believe it'll be more than fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess you haven't spent much time looking at the roadsides. So. <laughs> there's, there's a lot to see that you aren't, aren't yeah. familiar with, I can tell you. An, an alternative that might be a little closer is to actually see the work that we did in the center. And I don't know what you think, Paul, but you can actually see a little bit more in terms of a managed hedgerow and what we have done for selective clearing. Um, you know, in Jacobs Road, that's more like the ash, ash trees and yes. the guardrail issue that we talked about before. Right. And I, I don't know if it'd be better, Paul, just to, to do the center if we're only going to be there for 15 or 20 minutes. Maybe we should do both before and after. You're thinking you know, going to Jacob Road first and then to the center? Is that what you're thinking? Well, I was thinking if, if you press for if we only have 15 minutes, you can, you know, the center might make more sense. Uh, we got more than 15 minutes. So. Seth wants to start at 4.30 now. No, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually got stuff to do. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start at 5. I mean, it would be better if we did both and yes. did it before and then okay. swing by the center on the way back right. to the fire station. Yeah. Yes, I sure. think that's a good idea. And then we'll start at 6.30 at the fire station. Okay. Well, Five o'clock, Jacob's Road. Jacob and the intersection of Sparrow Road. We're going to meet. John's not going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> I will be in spirit. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that sounds good. Anytime you, with, um, anytime you want to go, call me up. And, uh, are we done I'll with trees? There and we All right. Talk. It'd be good to do that. Sure. Yep. Yeah. We're going to be at the firehouse at 6.30 instead of 6, then, because we're going to two different sites. Yep. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay. And just to give you a, an idea of, of what comes up, I mean, Jeff and Paul and I have walked the ashes along Sparrow Farm Road from my house down to that corner, which is half a mile, and walked back, and uh, we had an ash-focused conversation and a specific tree-focused conversation ongoing pretty much the whole time. We did talk about a few other things, but and, and we ambled that half mile each way. So there's plenty to talk about out there, as Paul said. Okay. And with the help of skilled people like him who have a lot of experience in 
in seeing the trees and reading them, then we can learn a lot. Okay. All right, so I'm thinking we should move, move to the next item. A little behind, but not too badly. So, the preliminary review of proposed amendments to the East Buffalo Lane Development Sure. Thank you. It's got a lot of them. And we have them somewhere up here. Mm -hmm. Uh, I learned a few things reading those through. Oh, you did? Assembly, whatever version. Yeah. 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 No, it's not worth sharing. It's just, not worth just me complaining. <laughs> you can do that at the hearing. Right. No, yeah, they're not changing any of that stuff, I don't think. The stuff you're complaining about? Yeah. It's just stuff I didn't realize how, I would say, how invasive our, our land use regulations are on the average person. The only, the only good thing is they don't get enforced, so. <laughs> so I guess I would like wow. to get Bruce to give us some context here. I'm intrigued by this bullet in the select board memo saying that when the select board awards the first public hearing on the proposed amendments for the next 150 days, the ZA must review applications under both existing and proposed regulations. Can you tell us more about what that means? Do, they, do projects have to meet? Yes. The requirements of both? Basically, it's the most stringent taking any action. Uh -huh. uh, and then we went to the town vote, and they uh -huh. passed, and uh -huh. we flipped the other way. Okay. So it was a weird stretch. And the right. same thing, in theory, could happen here. Right. And the, is it clear in the new regs where, where one or the other is more stringent? Or are there cases where they just say different things? Well, it's relatively clear when it's setbacks and things like that. Sure. Mm -hmm. But as far as... Um, in the village mm -hmm. for uses, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not clear. Okay. Uh, and it, it's more a case of, of uh, yeah. we won't get that many projects and we'll look at them carefully each time. And <laughs> right. you can also look at the draft that they had, that they had marked up. Yeah. I couldn't find out. I found the draft that they're using, the working draft, and I yeah. found the original, you know, the ones we're on now. But for some reason, I couldn't find that marked up one. The marked up one is very valuable because you can look and see where the changes were made. And right. you, can, you can do a cross-reference or a cross and see which yeah. ones are more restricted. So yeah. the, there is a problem with that. We oh. didn't have control of the documents. Oh, so it got a bunch when of people we marked got up. Them, yes. Oh. They were already marked. Tracked 14 different ways. Yeah, oh. that's, ter oh, okay. that's terrible when that happens. Yeah. Uh, Never mind. Yeah, you, you won't want... it. The report actually lays it out pretty clearly as to what to be looking mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the village stuff is explained in great detail in the village master plan because mm -hmm. that's where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other stuff, the accessory dwelling items, the setback items, they're pretty self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't see anything, anything in the changes that, were, that, were, that bothered me at all, really. So there's the setbacks in here, the new setbacks? Yep. Yeah. And what are they? Just a, like <laughs> there's the a lot thing. of different ones. Yeah. But, they're, but, they're, but, they're, <laughs> but they're being reduced to a certain extent. Yes, they're all like being reduced, reduced to a certain extent. Yeah. And, the, and the rules about... Um, we always had an exception for um, state right-of-ways because of their varying widths. Mm -hmm. Well, the town roads have varying widths as well in certain areas. and we broaden that particular definition to ensure that that was covered better mm -hmm. than it was. Uh, so little things like that are, to me, more important than a lot of the big picture items because they're cleaning up inconsistencies. Right. Uh, but well, as far as... Sorry. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, as far as the stuff in the village, I've got nothing brilliant to add. The village master plan is a 100-page document, and that's what they're playing off of. Yeah, and the zoning regs are 110 pages document. Yep. <laughs> and it's tough to shoehorn a 100 page you document. Into 110 <laughs> page you, go to document. you go to Woodbury and yours is 22 pages. <laughs> so, getting back to the 150 days, is there a way to reduce that time if we move with alacrity through the process after we first warn the, the first so public hearing? So, from my perspective, well, yes. If you put this on a fast track process once you start, the process. Right. Uh, last time, the 2009 ones are the best example because that was such a torturous journey. Uh, but 
the select board warned a hearing right off the bat and mm. triggered that 150 days and then sat on the silly things for the rest of that whole one yeah. year period. Yeah. Wow. And then we peti there's a petition right after that one year period passes. The planning commission led a petition drive okay. and that's what led to the town vote. Uh -huh. uh, hopefully we can avoid that process this time. Uh, but we have, I mean, Seth has been helping me. We have a couple of applications that need to get in before you warn a hearing because there are some people that are being taken from the industrial zone to a residential zone. Mm. And that is a massive change. And in one particular case, there's a business on it that is not yet permitted and is trying to get its acting gear to get its permit application in. And we don't personally, again, don't want to see him stopped because the town utilizes that business. Uh -huh. uh, He's been a very yeah. positive force for the last decade. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah so there are I, I a couple. Think, yeah, that? I think we should be making decisions based upon what's best overall versus one particular permit, permittee or applicant. And I would concur with the goal of let's try to make this as efficient as possible and pick a hearing time that closely aligns with either the next meeting or within two meetings of the public hearing, we can vote on it so that the window of time is shorter. But I don't think we as a select board should be making our decisions to favor one applicant over another or to make um, these changes um, to benefit a particular business. If our strategy of trying to be as efficient as possible aligns with that, that's fine, but I think we should be careful about um, being objective about uh, implementing new regulations. I think he was just mentioning, from what I heard, he's just mentioning the fact that this person needs to move his permit along in order to get to get in place before things change, and he may not even be able to do his business here anymore, even though he's had it there for ten years. I feel bad for him, um, and I'm glad that uh, that he can get some help to move along. Otherwise, I don't think it has anything to do with where we're going with our new regulations so the here so the object of this is to set a hearing no 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 the object is to get a sense of how you want to play this yeah do you want to the hearing obviously is a formal thing yes you can have forums right. like what you're going to do with the shade tree thing yeah. uh either in advance or after but yeah. preferably in advance that shade yeah. tree hearing was kind of weird well, it seems uh, <laughs> like a forum would be, they, okay, so the planning commission already had a hearing. They did. Right. And wasn't very well attended, I don't think. Nope. No. And unless there's something that triggers, this won't be very well attended. Right. So when would we do something like that? I mean, we've already, our, our next couple of meetings are going to be pretty well booked. So yeah. it, as I was saying, it's really up to you guys. Uh, it's more a case of, do you want to have a couple of meetings where you're talking about this? Yeah. Uh, or do you want to jump right into a community event? I'd like to go through this more myself. I haven't had a chance to, and I don't know what can change. I can see, I just read the um, report, and that does lay out what can change. Yeah, and you can just go and to the pretty, sections it's and It's pretty see. clear, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like, but, you know, I guess the next step, really, in the grand scheme of things, is to have a hearing. Unless, because we have a chance to review this ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, so normally I would say, okay, we've got a planning commission that's worked hard on yeah. a project. They've handed it off to us. They've done their work, and let's keep building on that momentum. Um, but I and maybe I'm putting too much importance on this 150 day and, and this. It, it is report. important. But I mean, I, I so, appreciate you okay. pointing that out. Okay. So, so my question then is, is there any sense at all to? You know, do our due diligence, learn about it right now, uh, but postpone uh, formal action on it until, say, November or sometime when um, there aren't a lot of pending permits, so that we don't have. I, a lot I don't of think you have to wait that long. No, I, don't okay. I, I think know. you. I really, what I really want is for you to be comfortable, you guys to be comfortable, mm -hmm. moving forward. I don't want you to warn the hearing 
and then you guys be the implement that stops it cold. Sure. I yeah. want you to be comfortable before we even go forward. And if we if we were in a meeting, who would do the presentation? I mean, who would be, like you would think you would have like similar to what they had? They they did a PowerPoint presentation. Didn't really say a heck of a lot, but it'd be nice to have some sort of presentation for people to look at. And they could easily come and do it. I mean, they they will want to be part of the process yeah. no matter what. Yeah. Uh, they may not know they want to be, but right. they will know. And that's on the web page too, the PowerPoint. So if you want to look at that, yeah. it talks about some of the major changes. So yeah. from this date, um, if we set a hearing for 60 days, say, hence, yeah. would that give a chance for pending permits to play through? You're trying to get past the May 2nd, the May 3rd DRB meeting. Get past it, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if you had a, if you kind of in your own mind targeted a, a sixty day window where you're at the end of let's say the second May meeting, you yeah. say, Okay, we're ready to go forward, schedule the hearing for June yeah. and mm -hmm. see what comes out of it. That's what I think we should do. You're also going to it may be nice to do it that way because you're gonna have those town plan amendments. Yep. And you have to have multiple hearings for town plan amendments. Yep. And you can piggyback a hearing. Oh, yeah, good. So you can get idea. one of them out of the way with that right. zoning right. Right. Judith has her hand up. Yes, yeah. Judith. Um, I was thinking, um, um, Seth, that you had indicated that you wanted to educate yourself on this, and I do as well. Yes. I thought it might be helpful if the planning commission could come before this, before the hearing, and meet with us, the select board, we can ask our technical questions so that our questions regarding lo the logistics and how you know, A fits B goes to C can be answered. And then at the public hearing, we'll be in a position to actually hear the public comment from folk if there is any public com comment. But most of our technical questions might have been answered up until that point. And then after the public hearing, will be in a better position to digest public comments with the information we obtained from the um, Planning Commission and then be able to act pretty quickly either in the next board meeting or uh, two board meetings from the public meeting that we have. Does that make sense? So Zach is ready to come back to a select board meeting at any time. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so you just have to Right. Say when you want him, and he'll be here. Could that be like May sixteenth or something like that? Because you got a lot going on, yeah. so the next two meetings. May sixteenth. When are you coming back? I'll be back the first of May. Will you be here for that first meeting? May second. Yes. Yeah. Same. Mm -hmm. I will be here. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Okay. I'm back. Well, I was thinking we might end up having the whole shade tree thing pushed to May 2nd. Well, that's, you may. that's true. That's right. So I was thinking of doing the next meeting. I think May 20th for um, maybe Zach to come in. And if we want to have a chance to really read through this very, very well, then maybe a little bit more time. Well, I want to bring this home. And yeah. Yeah. I want to read some more. Okay. So if we have some questions. Yeah, and, and I may not be at the May 16th meeting. I may be out of state on that day. Can you, can you zoom in that day? Or? Um, I may be in Spain, so. <laughs> yeah. Would there be a I'd difference? Probably, I may be able to, but I'd, I'd rather not. <laughs> yeah, okay. It, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's also not unusual to do a list of questions for the Planning Commission. Right. Uh, that's what some of the people did at the mm. forum. Yeah. And the Planning Commission would respond to that. And so. Okay. That's actually really efficient. So if, you, like, if you want to do that, Judith, that would be great. If you wanted to just have a list of questions that we could present to Zach or whoever comes in, and then uh, the rest, of, the only other option is we put it off to a date where you could be around. It doesn't much matter to me. What is? What do you? What do you think? Well, so well, can, can we just review some? So the date that we're going to do the planning tree, excuse me, the tree, the shade tree plan is. Um, May 2nd or April 18th? Exactly. But we don't know when we can get the facility over at the uh, fire station that room. I think that it would be preferably the April date, but if we can't get in that soon, then it would be second choice May. Yeah, May 2nd. And between the site visit and that going on, we have enough going on besides regular stuff. 
Yeah. So putting off the questions to May 18th makes sense, or May whatever it is. <laughs> May 16th. <laughs> May 16th. <laughs> You'll get so it. Makes sense. <laughs> but Judith, if you're feeling strongly and you want to attend that, we can put that meeting off. Um, well, when is the next meeting after that one, that, after May 16th? That's actually always a wild card question because we often... Day. Yeah, June six. We often run. Oh. Yeah, June six would be the next obvious. One. Yeah, but we often run the meetings in a staggered schedule at that point. We haven't really talked about it yet. Right. So it would be the beginning of June, probably. That's not going to hurt anything. No. Yeah. Did you want to do that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I could go either way. I could, you know, draft questions or do the June six or whatever. So. Um, what do you think? I'm. I'm fine either way. I kind of like Judith to join us with Thomas yeah. uh, from Spain yeah. <laughs> via Zoom. At three in the morning. Yeah. After having some sangria. Yeah. yeah. So the June sixth sound good? Sounds fine for me. Yeah. Whatever, whatever the first one in June is. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. yeah how it works out. That's it gives sound. us some breathing room. It does. Yeah. It gives us some room. And, yeah. Sounds Great. good. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so the the only reason I'll comment on that that particular date is that puts us in a bit of a bind for the hearing because you have to, these are these have to be worn a certain length of time yeah so you're probably looking at July at that point yeah which is fine I mean fine. no harm no foul uh, but it just puts you behind the ball a ball on the town plan hearing so you may have your first town plan hearing before you do your zoning Right, hearing. What's driving the timing of the town plan? Yeah. Hearing? The trick with the town plan is you want to get them going as quickly as possible because you have to get through two of them mm -hmm. and then you have to get through the regional planning official process. Right. And the planning commission would like to get those uh, cell tower telecommunication facility yeah. updates in yeah. sooner rather than later. Yeah. That's all. Okay. That makes sense. I think we're all right. It's okay. Okay, so... So do you want the regs on agendas between now and that June 6th date? As far as discussing goes? Just a general discussion. I, think, I don't think it would hurt to put them in one of our meetings between now and then. So you want to do that one at the first May meeting? Wait a sure. minute, I thought that's what we were just discussing. Yeah. No, we're discussing, we, we can talk about this among ourselves. Yes, is what that, saying. that's what we're, that's, that's my understanding of what we were just no, discussing. No, Scheduling you, this, hold on, we're going to schedule the select board meeting where we have our own internal discussion on this so, uh, so that Judith can be with us and we're going to do that the first week of June, at, first meeting in June, and then at that meeting we're going to warn the hearing. That's my understanding. See, I thought that was the one yes to all of that except yeah. that was the one Zach would come to right. to clean up any inconsistencies I didn't know if you wanted to have your own see yes. where you're standing before that before we start have a discussion among ourselves without yeah. Zach on June oh, 6th oh, we're going to have a member of the planning commission come in okay. Right. Okay. So, I, I hearken back to that 2008 process okay. things got off to a great start and then the select board members started to have less strong feelings, uh -huh. or maybe stronger feelings, just right. in the opposite direction. <laughs> and um, it would have been a little cleaner if they had figured out that they had strong feelings mm -hmm. ahead of starting to invite people in and mm -hmm. all the rest. Right. And that's why I think we should put it on our agenda. So just, to, like, just, like, you know, okay. Just for 15 minutes. 15 minutes or yeah. something. And if something. we've been yeah. reading the thing, we yeah. might have some thoughts. Yeah. And, oh, Carl, what do you think? And, yeah. Amy, what do you think? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And, and, and I think when I look at it again, I'll look at it from a different perspective, too, from some of the people who will be impacted by some of the changes that you can yeah. see. The, the biggest change is the districts. Mm -hmm. And it was yes. one of the reasons we helped to put the kibosh on that um, big project was because there was too much district changing going on. Mm -hmm. Now it's just a few properties, but there are still some properties affected. Mm -hmm. So Carl, to your, are you okay with putting yes. it on the agenda? Yes. I am too. Okay. 
a Zach free discussion and then a Zach full discussion. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a public meeting and he's welcome to attend. Exactly. All right. So I'm going to cross off G and I'm going to move to H. Oh, we're just flying through this. Oh, no, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> Consideration. It's going to get slower, Doug. <laughs> Liquor license renewal for CPW store. I move to approve the liquor license renewal for CPW store. Second. Yeah. Do we have somebody? Can I ask this one question? Yeah. Oh. No. Yes. Um, do we? Um, do we? We had it signed differently. I'm so used to when we used to sign it. All the select board members used to sign those. They don't now, right? You just no. Them. You're going to tonight. Oh, okay. Since you're here. All right. It's in the back. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I saw that. I just not, I knew we didn't do it last time. We had one person authorized to do it. So, okay. We only had one person, one select board member in the building. Right, right. right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just questioning that. That's all. Yeah. I didn't know if it changed. Sometimes these things change too. Bruce, do I need to come in to sign it, or is having? No, just there? having three is enough. Okay. Yeah. Um, any further discussion about the liquor license renewal? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right. All right. Aye. Okay. Whew, we got through that one. But now you have to actually sign, so that it may take a few more minutes. Uh, we can talk and sign. <laughs> I can chew gum across the street and say gum. Wow. wow. I can, but I forget to look both ways. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so we're going to sign under approved. <laughs> I did that, didn't I? Oh, uh, yeah, you did. <laughs> I've seen, seen people go, one person signed it on a disapproval. Oh, all yeah. down oh, my yeah. goodness. <laughs> That's so funny. Not a lot of room there. Um, so the next item is I, discussion on town management in light of COVID-19. The first bullet item is review of order regarding municipal operations during pandemic. And we as the, the memo says that the office staff is comfortable with lifting the max expectation. They would like to keep the limited access element, although that doesn't necessarily have to be part of an emergency order. So I would like some clarification on that because when I have asked about, I haven't used the word limited access, but I, I said, do people need to make an appointment to come in? No, no, they just walk in. So could you remind us what, what is limited access right so now? So basically the limited access means those two doors are closed. Okay. And for you to get past those doors, you now need to be invited. Okay. Whereas in the past, those doors were open uh -huh. and... <laughs> right, okay. Right. Was, 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 was. It, it seems to feel better. Okay. Uh, and I think it's improved uh, the uh, way the clerk and the assistant clerk handle things up front. Uh -huh. Is that a COVID related thing or does it kind of feel better just in general in the way that the office works? I think it's the feel better just in general okay. because by, I think the attorneys, researchers, etc., are now trained to number one, do stuff online as much as you can, which yep. is great. Yeah. Uh, and then number two, call ahead. Yeah. And then we don't end up with six attorneys here at one time, right. with three of them trying to go in the vault and the clerk saying no. Yeah. Uh, that was never comfortable. This right. stops that. Okay. And mm -hmm. it's just worked. Yeah. You know? All right. okay. And it really no, has nothing to do with COVID or not COVID. Right. It's just, it's just it's it's organizing system. the access basically. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're saying in the select board memo that uh, that doesn't have to be a select board policy. That we don't have to speak to it one way or other, the limited access. It's not part of an well, emergency order. You, yeah, yeah it's, it doesn't have to be part of a pandemic emergency order. Right. right. You determine how this building works. Uh -huh. So you can just say it's acceptable to keep that limited access aspect, yeah, we but don't not necessarily a part of the pandemic. Can we we just, don't need a motion. Okay. Can we just say by consensus that the office workers like it? Work well, wait, we want to talk about the whole ball of wax here, right? We're talking about lifting the mask mandate in the office. Um, there are separate yeah. issues, though. They are, right? yeah. Right. Yeah, so maybe okay. we should talk about the mask mandate first. I was thinking that. Because if we don't lift that, then exactly. we d definitely won't lift the other one. Right. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. It just makes better sense for order of events. 
Uh, so Bruce said he talked to Rosie and the rest of the staff, and I have also, and they seem like they're comfortable lifting the mask mandate in the town office. Uh, what do we all think about that? I think the, uh, the people who work here are the ones who get exposed to the greatest variety of people who come in. They can control whether they wear masks or not. Yeah. And if they are comfortable lifting that mandate, then I'm comfortable with them doing that, especially given uh, the fact that under these new uh, community level guidances that the CDC has given uh, Washington County and most of the state of Vermont and the Northeast is in a green situation yeah. right now, uh, yeah. a low uh, COVID state. Okay, so it sounds like Everyone else is support of lifting the mask mandate in town office? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I am yes, absolutely. If everybody's good with it, then. Yeah, everyone seems to be on the same page. Yeah. Judith? Yeah, if the employees are comfortable with it, that's fine by me. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yes. Hang loose. Uh, I would think you'd need to um, end your emergency order if you're going to do so that. I you may not have seen it because I sent it just after six Bruce. But but it's the other resolution. Yeah. Oh, okay. But that's a different resolution. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Isn't it? Um, it doesn't have any, does it have well, something? Well, actually, the original, I think, did say, uh, talk about the mask mandate in the town office. I removed, I believe I removed any reference to that in this one because I assumed that we were going to possibly take it away. Well, you have face coverings. In the town office? Well, it doesn't say town office specifically. Right. All establishments located in the town of East Montpelier. Right. Are encouraged to adopt the no, face covering policy. Yeah. So, so this one doesn't talk about. The, the original town. did talk about the town office. This one does not. I'm okay. not sure what you're referring to. Um, Carl had a document around, but it, yeah. It's a, so it's um, it's on the website, Judith. It would be right mm -hmm. below the three documents that we were rev reviewing tonight. But if you mm -hmm. haven't refreshed that page, you wouldn't see it because it didn't get put up until about 6.25. And thank you, yeah. Bruce, for turning yeah. that around so quickly. So, so, Carl, does this resolution have to do with the third bullet item in our agenda here? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. What I'm saying is that the one that I was working off of uh, that is also on the website, that that one, I believe, um, does talk about the town office mandate. Okay. Um, actually, it doesn't. Uh, it, it uses that as a whereas. It says, yeah. whereas the town of East Montpelier is mandated masks in the town office when people are together and for all visitors. So, so that was, must have been a separate action on our part. Yes, I think so. Okay. Okay, so going back to bullet number one, that's what you were just talking about, the review of order regarding municipal operations? No, correct. That's correct. Yes. Yes. Okay, so we're going to rescind that order. Is that correct? That's what I would think you were doing. Yeah, that's yeah. what we're doing. So let me just call up that order so that I have yeah, the right so thing. Yeah, so we're clear on what we're doing here. Yeah, so this is, well, uh, as further revised August 12th, 2021, the town building will be open for limited access to the public until further notice. Mask use and social distancing are required for all parties, including employees and volunteers when in the presence of other people. Etc. Etc. Okay. Yeah. So I don't see anything in there that needs to be continued at all. Does anyone else? I don't even know no. what you just read. Yeah. Uh, so we're rescinding that. Um, do we need a motion for that? Okay. And we have a date that was made, so we have something to. Refer right. To. It's as revised August twelfth, twenty twenty one. Okay. So let's rescind that. Yeah. We need a so motion to that effect. I'll move to rescind it. So you would have the original date and the date it was amended. There's several amended dates. Yeah. Yeah. The mm -hmm. final one. Final so one. let's say the, the March 16, 2020 order as finally revised August 12, 2021. So like that there are about okay. four or five other dates that it's mm -hmm. amended in there. All right. So you made the motion. Yeah. Okay. Seconded. And we have a second by John. Uh, any more discussion about that? Confusion? Okay. 
All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. That's rescinded. And I just want to comment that this is something that we're doing on this date in 2022, and circumstances may change, and sure. we may want to revisit. Absolutely. It. Understood. We have it on file. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have so many versions yes. on file yeah. at this point. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then I want to go to the next bullet, which is a review of COVID-19 vaccination mitigation policy for employees. So I'm, I brought this in both for the fact you guys are reviewing all your yeah. policies mm -hmm. and because we had said we were going to get back to this as we approach the summer season yeah. because there is an issue and same issue that we discussed uh -huh. six months ago. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, and Has that yeah. one person been, been compliant with testing? The, that, that's a different issue, but yes. Okay. okay. Yes. So now um, we could say town employees don't get tested and don't wear masks. You could say that. Well, you could say that. Or you could say that part-time seasonal employees, remember we had that yeah. discussion about oh, whether yes. it covered them. Yes. You yeah. could say it doesn't. No. Uh, um, you, or you could choose what you want to do. Sorry. I'm sorry. I think people are assuming we're all in agreement of rescinding this or modifying it. I'm not, I'm not of that opinion. Um, I know the state hasn't rescinded its vaccination policy um, and I, I don't know why we would um, yeah I'm not convinced why we should rescind it okay so I'm not saying we should rescind it all I okay, did was, I'm sorry. I, I just brought it up okay okay because it's on the agenda and I'm not sure where to go with it so okay this, that's you. all I'm saying I'm, I'm not saying anything about rescinding I mean, well, we are, not, we are in a very low risk situation right now, so is it fair to put the continue? I, I mean, I'm talking about that one person. I know the other issue, too, about, you know, the outside seasonal workers is, is different, I guess. But. Yes. The cemetery, and, and yes. specifically we're talking about the cemetery. Yes. And, and they're outside, and I think we had already kind of decided that it probably did not cover them anyway. Exactly. Well, that, okay. well, unfortunately, we didn't. Oh, we didn't we decide. decided okay. it did, but we were going to review it before oh, it became an issue. Okay. So, so let's look at our full-time employees. I mean, we, yeah. we, we are able to get into a situation where um, the risk of getting COVID in public places is much less than it has been in the past. And getting a high percentage of the population vaccinated has been uh, a huge part of that. And uh, I think that uh, what we're see, seeing in Hong Kong right now, for example, where they're seeing a huge spike in deaths because they did not bother to get their older people vaccinated in large numbers, and the older people are the most uh, vulnerable, shows that uh, vaccination continues to be an important policy. So I think as employers, uh, I would favor us going ahead and maintaining the policy in place, at least for uh, the full-time employees. And, and I'm open to a discussion about cemetery commission employees. Can we not target? Remember that part was part of the problem. Part-time yeah. employees. Part-time yeah. employees. The part-timers are mostly outdoors anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Outdoor yeah. employees. Outdoor employees. Yes. So yeah. less likely to transmit. And yeah. we know they won't get vaccinated. And we know the other thing we do know too is that those that are vaccinated are pretty well protected. Those who aren't vaccinated are the ones that are at risk. So anyone who's not vaccinated is really taking the risk, as opposed to those of us who are vaccinated and boosted, and have good immune systems. And at a time when it's hard to get employees to do work, we want to, our employees, I think, to not be at very much risk for COVID. Right. So, Carl, um, you're saying that you would have the cemetery commission be under this vaccinated, this blanket vaccination? No. You would, no. okay, thank I, you. I, 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 I'm not commenting on the part time employees. Okay, at, all right. At this yeah. point. We're just dealing with a full time employee. Okay, at thank this you. Point in yeah. the conversation. Yeah. So, if you. It's a tough one. Yeah, if you leave the policy in place. Yes. So part two would be, are you willing to revisit your decision in November that it applied to part-time seasonal employees and not to appointees? That was, those were the two questions that were asked at that time. Mm -hmm. You went one direction and one and not with the other. Mm -hmm. Tough one. I mean, if we get... I think an important distinction is whether people are working primarily outside or primarily inside. I mean, if there are people who are working part-time in the office here, for example, that's, um, that's different than working part-time outside. 
even if they're and if they're appointed, they will have would have to. Have, I'm just asking this. They would have to go out and and, and either get vaccinated, vaccinated, attest to being vaccinated, or else get tested. Yeah, yeah. So we didn't go that direction no. for the appointed. Right. And of course, the elected are in this office without any control. Right. Right. Uh, so you can narrow it, state it as narrowly as you want, mm -hmm. uh, and it's your policy. Right. Right. So full time on. The road crew is what we're talking, actually. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's a road crew. It's, it's Bruce, it's uh, town right. clerk, treasurer, assistant town clerk. It's yeah. all full-time employees. Yeah, the problem is we don't have any problem with compliance. Well, we, it, it's the policy. No, it's the policy. Yeah. I know, but... It, 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 it approaches everybody, though. Yeah. The brush stroke. Right. This is a policy regardless of who the employees are in each position. What I'm also you, kind of wondering how easy it's going to be in the near future to just go drive up behind Burger King and get that test. I think they're shutting all those things down. So you have to really, go to yes. Kenny Drugs or somewhere. Yeah, it's really going to be a burden. Right. But. Ah, that's a tough one. Mm. I, I think that's not up to us. Should we let it, let's, let, we'll revisit it later? In another month? Yeah. Can't we really wait. wait. I'm sorry. We but can't? It, it is a time sensitive issue. If you would like to table this until your executive session at the end, I can explain it to you. Yeah. But then we'll have to come out and make a decision, but potentially. Well, yeah, potentially. Okay. Yeah. I think um, we should do that in the executive session. Yeah, if, if you've if got that, inside information. Yeah, information. Yeah, yes. more information that might be helpful to us. But you've already made a decision. I presume that I'm correct in saying that you want to keep the policy in place. So that's off the table. The question is the extent of its effect. I think that's my position. Yeah. That's what I thought. I was yeah. kind of getting a sense from everybody that yeah. way. Yes. Okay. So we're going to table the review until we get more information in the executive session. Um, now we have to review the resolution encouraging wearing face covers. The last four. Yep. Yep. And with that, this is. Yes. Yes. Just this one little bullet here. The and bullet then, on our agenda, um, under I, review of resolution encouraging the wearing of face coverings. And again, this is something that I just put out based on how I anticipated the discussion might go, looking at our earlier resolution that this would be replacing. Uh, updating it with current information and just as a point of discussion. Right. Have you been able to read it, Judith? Yep, I'm, I'm reading it now. Yep. So when you say the select board intends to review this matter at every meeting, are you buying this to that? <laughs> <laughs> this is a statement of intent. Um, but, intent is not really binding. But yeah, I mean, I, I think that we should continue to have this on, have COVID management on the agenda at every meeting, and and yeah. uh, you know maybe we'll say okay, nothing new to talk about. You're right. move right on. Yeah, that's but true. It's it's still it's, it's still a pandemic. Idea. Right. Yeah. We're, We're still, still dealing with it. Still have more than a thousand people dying a day in this country. Right. Yeah, I just don't want to be held to it, but I think it's a good idea for them to get. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So I kind of like your resolution. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Judith, please. What did you say, Judith? I, I was just looking at the face covering section of his of yeah. the proposed resolution. Um, maybe the last clause. Um, something like are encouraged to adopt a face covering policy consistent with their company policy. You know, something more generic than that their staff and co co customers are comfortable with. You know what I mean? Um, or, or can we even end it? Are encouraged to adopt their own face covering policy? Period. And the policy could be we don't require masks. 
or yeah. we have no face covering policy. Yeah, I, w I was struggling to come up with some good language for that, yeah. Judith. Um, yeah, I hear to, you. Uh, to adopt their own face covering policy. Period. That, that, sound, period, that's that sounds good to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to keep it as a singular, or do you want it to say their own face covering policies, or whatever? I, I <laughs> All hate establishments. Having their and policies. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And can we accept? Do do we do a motion on this resolution? Or yeah, that's intent. All right, so we could accept it with those changes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, we could just move it with that change. Yeah. 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 Okay. And, unless there are other changes okay. that people. Want to see? No, no. Okay. Judith seconded. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I moved it. it. Me. I guess you I, or me? I don't care. <laughs> I, I guess I put it before you for consideration. So I guess I'll, I'll move it. Okay. <laughs> so are we also rescinding the prior resolution? Because um, this isn't that, really an amendment, or it isn't acting yeah, like an amendment. Yeah, that's right. It doesn't explicitly. Re uh, so what language should we add to make that explicit, Bruce? Just rescind the other one. Uh, and and, your and rescind the resolution of whatever it was, May 12th? Yeah, but you don't have to write it in here. That'd no. just be for the motion. Oh, okay. Yeah. They'd okay. be separate actions. Okay. So we're going to make two motions? So it's one motion that does two things, I think Bruce is saying. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a motion. We have a second. We have further discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. So, Judith, this is going to mean there will be a document that you probably do want to sign when you have a chance. The other ones will, will sign it. So if you get a chance to stop in, you can add your name to it. But we'll have to sign an amended copy. Yeah, I'll right. okay. do it in a second. Right. But it, it will go into effect as soon as three of us sign it. When it's three quarters of the way around the table. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so I think we're good. Wow. On that one, yeah. Yeah, we're only like seven minutes off. Yeah, that Look actually that. went a lot faster than I was yeah, afraid. Was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to move to the next item, which is appointments. And let me get through this package of stuff. Bruce, do you have more copies of the of the zoning regs? Or copy? I have a copy. If I don't want to steal your last copy. I can make another one. All right. <laughs> I'd like yeah, I'd like to have it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks. So I'm looking at the appointments and listed with proposed appointees and term and dates if appointed. Uh so all the people listed here have been contacted and are willing to keep serving? Except for the one shaky agreement to start becoming the Central Vermont Solid Waste Man. Well, I, I saw the emails and, and John agreed to do it. <laughs> I think. That's how I read it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you very much for your, and, for your faith say, in me. Didn't he say he was bored because he always been playing tennis these days? <laughs> yes. So that one comes with a form you have to sign okay. and a conflict of interest thing you have to sign uh, before we can finalize it. Okay. Yeah. The Central Vermont Regional Planning thing is still a bit of a, no. of a challenge. That is. Um, there isn't anybody that strongly wants to do it. Yeah. That could be really time uh, time consuming. Is it? Yeah, you got to put some work into that. If you're going to be effective too. Yeah. And Julie put a ton of time. I like to put Julie put so much into it. Yes. Uh, so much you're not going to replace her too quickly. No.
so it's a small thing, but um, for the animal control officer, Bruce, uh, at one point in, uh, in minutes or something, you referred to uh, the position as a second animal control officer. The official position, I believe, is the, as, uh, as you put here, the assistant animal control officer. Uh, is there any formal distinction between a second and an assistant? <laughs> It's whatever you want it to be. Yeah, yeah. Can we, can uh, we just rename it here, the, the second animal control officer? Is it sufficient in our list of appointments to sure. change the name of the position in that motion when we adopt this slate? If you would like to change it, we certainly can change it. Yeah, yeah, because I, I feel we have such a uh, cooperative arrangement that, and there's, it's not like there's something that I have to sign and she, you know, she can fill in and do anything. So. I, I feel comfortable calling it in a second. Would be for the ter for the terms as designated. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yep. Yep. Because they're all different. <laughs> yeah. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. So before you run off on this one, it's another discussion of future stuff. Hmm. Conservation commission. Yeah, I know. Yep. As we're coming out of the pandemic, do you want to bring that up? There's yeah, a lot of people. That was something we lost momentum on. It's hard and to find people, though. Oh, well, wow. a lot of these people that I'm getting, uh, remember, I've been sending out emails to people, so mm -hmm. some of them are sending back saying, and when the Conservation Commission right. comes forward, yeah. we'll be ready. And how many people will we think it would be on there? You've never made a decision. Okay, so we need to put it on an agenda. Mm -hmm. You can have quite a few, right? Yeah. yeah. You, you would talk to anywhere from five to nine. Yeah. <laughs> you could negotiate it. Yeah. If, you if, get, I, if, if I, you get too many on, you get quorum yeah. issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. Too many is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hard to get a lot done too sometimes. Yes. I think the proposal said up to nine. Uh, I'm trying to remember how it was phrased, but nine was in there. Nine's a lot. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you also so, have to make that gut wrenching decision as to what committees are being rolled into it, what committees might become subcommittees of it, and right. what committees are going to stay underneath you guys. Right. We're going to need a list of... Yeah. Something. There is a list right in that proposal. Yes. You just have to make the final decision as to how you're going to do it. Do we want to wait until we get the town plan and zoning reg stuff off our table? And and that, plan up to you, whenever you want to do it. I think it. that sounds prudent. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't mind starting the discussion. Really? I don't. You're wanting to walk two gum at the same time. I can do both three times at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to do, I don't care. If people are feeling overburdened with all the stuff we have to do in the next couple months, we can put it off. And if people feel a driving need to get a conservation committee set up. Well, I did see that. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. Couple places. Well, the Planning Commission has asked for it, yeah. and the Conservation Funding Advisory Committee members yeah. want it to happen because they want to have their committee go away and uh -huh. right. join mm -hmm. the commission. Mm -hmm. I think it depends on how much we have on our agendas coming up because okay. it's going to take a little while to flesh the whole thing out. That's it. I mean, it's a complicated topic, and that's why we it haven't is. hunted it. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. we need it some is. time. Take some time just to review the old minutes. And it's going to take some time to review it and you get a mind around what's going to go away, what's yeah. going to come yeah. into it. Yeah. I mean, my brain isn't even there anymore. I don't even remember what. Yeah, yeah I have to go back. Well, I happen in town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, yeah, there's a meeting over the fire station where we talked about various mm -hmm. aspects of this. So I'm flexible. Whenever people feel uncomfortable about putting in the agenda, then we can start doing it. So. Whatever you want to do. 
I think if we have a bunch of packed agendas and hearings and stuff, we might want to wait until after. Okay. I mean, it's, it's yes, I mean, it is something that should be done soonish, but I think if we... It's just that if we start putting it on our agenda, then we can start getting a mind around it. Okay. And if we put it, you know, fairly close, you know, a meeting, the next meeting we have it, so you're meeting. talking about like little 10 minute increments or something? Well, I'm talking in 15, 20 minutes to start talking about it. Okay. And start talking about potential people, blah, blah, blah. blah. Is Are there we, any way that we could get homework or something just to revise so we're not just sitting here spinning our wheels? And I, mean, I don't think we'll be spinning our wheels. No? Okay. No. You guys, everybody remembers exactly what we were talking about. I, I remember. I, I can put it together. Okay, good. Put it okay. <laughs> then I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can review it and then we can... <laughs> So I, I just think that it's whenever you feel comfortable getting on okay. the Okay, I mean, you're probably right then. And, and if Bruce is willing to... But he's gonna put a, um, the material put together. together, then that's so great. That, and I'm that'll jog it. your mind a lot. Yes, no, that's good. Yeah. All right. Good. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, so, whenever it happens, I'm fine. Yeah. Uh, so, can we move to the next? Okay, so we have warrants, but we've got this other business we gotta deal with. Well, what just to deal with it? You want know the warrants? We can just look at them and approve them real quick. Yeah, I've already signed some. I already signed it. Yeah, there's a special warrant too, though, right? Oh, no, 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 no. You you oh. signed the special warrant. Yeah, that's already done. That's just yeah. for their review if they yeah. want to. And then the March twenty first warrant. That's the one I'm passing on. Yeah, yeah, I've I've had it right here anyway. Okay. Nothing very exciting on that one. No. Although the <laughs> the uh, Mac, the 2018 Mac, had to get um, some structural, some plow structural aspects repaired, and now the 2013 needs to do. Well, that, remember, 2013 is all the plowed that. into I the about that hole. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> I said they dug a big hole in the road. <laughs> they did dig a big hole. In the town, the plow went. I <laughs> resign. <laughs> What's that? No, I'm, I'm just okay. wondering about this story. <laughs> oh, so it was that day of snow, and it was soft, and uh -huh. and the roads weren't plowed, and then I drove out of my farm, and the road hadn't been plowed. I drove down to the intersection of the Trail Road and Kelton Road, and there's a lot of mud all over the place, and there's a big hole in the road. And I'm like, Boop, boop, the truck goes in about this far. Uh -oh. I'm like, uh oh, and the road has been plowed to that point. So uh -oh. I knew the plow broke. Uh -oh. and, I, and, okay. and because I was plowing, having a hard time, because the plow kept digging in, uh -huh. I knew what had happened is they're driving along, and the plow all of a sudden went cut in, uh -huh. and everything stopped very quickly. Oh, and I knew that something got broke or uh -huh. bent, uh -huh. which is what happened. Yeah. And then I saw Guthrie's truck go by, the freight liner that we bought for a spare truck. Yeah. I saw it go by later, plowing the road. I'm like, oh, I know something's broken. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> you're right. Yeah. And we have the spare truck. Well, yeah. they were already using the spare truck because the other truck, truck yeah. went down. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, being a 2013, the model uh, parts, model year parts are no longer made. <laughs> so they're having to replace a couple of uh, a support post yeah uh had to be replaced as well so it's going to be a couple thousand must more been the front end it would have ever yes oh, it's the, it was the, the lead plow, plow frame yeah oh. so you know the plow is like this and you're cut going along and it's so soft the thing just cut in and then all of a sudden everything stops and when everything stops it it yeah. yeah and I had talked to Frank about it, you know, how fast we go and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah, I was going 12 miles an hour in second gear, doing it slowly. But I had been plowing previous to that, and I had my foot on the clutch, and the thing, my tractor stopped because it did the same thing, <coughs> like this, and all of a sudden you're in the windshield, mm -hmm. you know. So it doesn't always go well when that happens. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so under other business, we have the James Barlow matter. The James Barlow matter. That's the nice way to phrase it. So, we have used Jim for a number of things, uh, but we've never had an engagement letter for general services as opposed to the specific things. And the Reed Estate has finally been opened, and we're going to need a back and forth during that process. And it would be nice to have him on board where he can charge us in a normal way. There's no retainer element. This is just an open. When he works, he'll charge. 
So I didn't understand the difference that this would make the way you presented it. So usually we have an engagement w with Jim. Yeah. Right? We don't have a town attorney anymore. Right. So <laughs> the normal things that we had done for 35 years was just to call Bruce and say, hey, mm -hmm. that those days are gone, at least for right now. Uh, and we're using attorneys as needed for specific things. Yeah. And so we always have a engagement agreement with them uh, for those services. So with Jim, we have tax sale agreements. You always do an engagement letter for him for okay. the series of tax sale agreements. Okay. This is more open-ended. This okay. is more of a general services agreement. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's all this. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Can I ask a couple of questions? Um, could we ask him if he's covered by malpractice insurance? Because I've recently learned um, that Vermont attorneys don't need to be kept, kept um, covered by liability or malpractice insurance. So I, I'm hoping he is, but that would be an important question. Um, and if he is, I would make one change to the letter in the first sentence after the town of East Montpelier, I'd include a parenthetical, the town, because subsequently he refers to town, but because he also mentions the town of Callis, um, so that it's clear to which town he's mm -hmm. referring when he says the town, we know it's the town of East Montpelier. So it's but online. If he is covered by yeah. So that's on line three, Judith, that you're suggesting the parenthetical? Line um, two. It's actually the second. Oh, the second line. line. Yeah. 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 Okay. The first time the town of East Montpelier is yep. identified. Got it. And he what since he's working for the town of Callis and advising them on the fire department and he wisely uh, to avoid conflicts of interest says that this yeah. does not include um, matters related to the fire department. Um, are there other issues that we might have legal um, conflicts with the town of Callis or other towns with and in what case, what do we do in that case? We just go to somebody else on an appointment letter basis or engagement letter we, basis? We don't have to go to him for anything. Yeah. He's just kind of laying out what he would be willing to do for us. Yeah. Yeah. And so he was very clear, and he, he's been clear to us before. Yeah. Because um, we went to Callis a couple of years ago, and he was sitting in there, and he made it clear that even though he was currently representing us as in a tax sale agreement, uh -huh. that he was there as Callis's attorney right. for right. that purpose that night. Right. right. Uh, so I think he's just being very careful, but I yeah. don't think you have to list every possible. Yeah. Right, because we don't have to hire him. We don't have to. Right. Or utilize right. them or whatever. It's kind of an open ended agreement. Yep. Looks like. So do you I, I like the work that he does. I, I enjoy talking to yep. him. Um, I, I like the advice that he's given us in the select board with his animal control officer. I have had occasion to consult him about uh, an ordinance or a possible ordinance. I think he's been very helpful. And uh, I am uh, very com comfortable signing a more open ended engagement letter with him. So do you want to table this and come back to it in two weeks, or do you want to approve it now and subject to having these changes? Because um, yeah, obviously we can't answer Judith's question. Right, right. right. Approve, it right. Sub approve it subject to him having the malpractice uh, insurance. Is that okay with you, Judith? Sure. Yep, and with that change? Yeah, sounds okay. good. Yeah, we'll approve it. Okay. I, Contingent upon it. I, I, I make that motion. We have a second. John second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The case gave James Farley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm labeling it. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move to the Worcester. The Worcester thing, they called me, it was late. Um, the guy talked for a while, and then I thought this would be a good matter for select board to bring up. He wanted it done in a timely way, so. I told him to call Bruce, gave him the phone number, and Bruce was nice enough to print this off, his email. And here we go. So has anyone had a chance to read it? I have. I have not. Okay. 
concerning a cell tower. Yeah, I found it out. Yeah. Yeah, um, I read it. Um, the concern is, though, that they're looking for the Public Utility Commission to make changes in its application or in how it applies its own policies and rules. The problem is the statute dictates the criteria under which the Public Utility Commission um, determines whether to approve or not approve a telecommunications project. So the fact that the statute specifically excludes consideration of the town plan from its criteria, um, the PUC can't consider that. So that's a statutory change that would need to take place. Asking the um, PUC to consider that, they can't because it conflicts with the statute. So it's kind of a moot point then. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate the sentiment, and you know, I'm sure you know, as a select board, we likely share the desire for towns to have control over where these um, telecommunication projects are cited, and that they be consistent with our town's plans and zoning bylaws. Mm -hmm. But if we want that, we would need to talk with you know. Kim Jessup the next time she comes by or look to make a statutory change mm -hmm. because I don't think this will be effective. Um, I, I agree, but but just to say um, I am sort of on board with this letter and I don't mind sending a letter in support of the concept, I agree that it doesn't have any effect. I guess I feel uncomfortable about signing on to a letter or memo asking the PUC to do something that they can't statutorily do. So I would feel uncomfortable signing on to a letter like that. Well, do you, I read this as a letter to the select board of the town of Middlesex, not to the PUC. Uh, no, he, he sent us the email that was developed for the town of Middlesex. Right. So this is a copy of an email designed for Middlesex. Uh -huh. And he's, in his Middlesex email, he had a template, a, a attached template. Yes. For us, he just kept the wording of the Middlesex thing, but not as a separate. So you're re I, I think are there you was reading this as a request for us to write the PUC? No. 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 I'm reading this as Sorry. Worcester. Sorry putting a finger out in our direction after having actually dealt with Middlesex in an agreeable way, and so they had a plan. Uh -huh. This is a first stab at Okay, Eastmont so I'm, I'm sorry, I misspoke. I'm reading this as a letter to the Worcester Select Board. The one that oh, the, the, the that's what members. they would want, yes. is a yeah. letter to them. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm no, talking. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it doesn't amount to anything. What a request they can't, can't do or What's that? I think I misunderstood to whom this letter would be going. Yeah. Um, so what purpose does it serve sending it to Worcester? We're just supporting what they're trying to do. So, so I, I, I'm thinking, just trying to put myself in their shoes, Judas, I, I think that yeah. they are maybe thinking the same way that you are, that this does re uh, require a statutory change, and that having the support of other towns in the region would give them a stronger hand when going to the legislature. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just reading between the lines. I don't know. Well, on the last page, it says town select boards and planning commissions must be involved in the site. I mean, it kind of yeah. says what his wish list is. So. Yeah. yeah, but Judah's saying they can't be involved with it because the ordinance, this, the law, the right. statute says they're not. Right. But I think that yeah. this guy is implying that maybe they would change the statute. Or I'm not reading that. In, um, unless I'm mistaken. The way it would play is we would send Worcester a letter, either yes. to the select board or to the planning commission, yes. it wouldn't matter. Mm -hmm. yes. And they could then upload yes. it because they are a statutory party uh -huh. yes. to this case. Right. Yeah. And so they're just, like we've been saying, they're strengthening their case. Right. But we wouldn't become an independent party. We wouldn't be right. able to no. send this to the PUC right. Right. as a filing. Exactly. Right. Yeah, it goes through that. Yeah. So, Help me understand what the current process is. Zach said something the last time that he was here speaking for the Planning Commission about the Planning Commission tackling, and, and I think you alluded to it earlier today, a 
town plan um, revision that would be like the proposed one that the energy committee was working on for siting of yeah. uh, uh, solar and so on that would specify where in town we would or would not want cell towers? It, it would give greater standing to our plan and our zoning regs if they uh, were modernized to meet the current allowance, I guess you would say. Yes, if you put into your, your plan that there is you know, scenic areas and tie that into your telecommunication section, uh -huh. that would have weight. Okay. If you put them into the zoning regs and had standards in there, eh, but maybe to a degree it would help. Uh -huh. The standards are so overwhelmed by federal statute mm -hmm. that uh -huh. there's just nothing there there. But you can try, and it, what they're trying to do is make it so that it's kind of alluded to in here. You know, if it's a 200-foot tower and the house is 150 feet away, that's bad news. You can probably uh, rationally put the kibosh on it. But if it's more than falling distance, but still all the other things that come into mind, yeah. there really isn't much you can use to stop it. Okay. So even, even if you've amended your town plan in that e way? Even if you've, because then you fall back to those standards that are essentially not, uh, not open for discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're looking for, and that's, I'm not sure this was a great letter, uh -huh. but it certainly, you don't even know what, you, well, you may simply because it's been in the news, but he didn't even give you any specifics. He just referenced himself. Right. So you're not even sure what the situation is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to know if it's one you really want to sign on to. Yeah. Uh, but it's certainly drawing what attention. Is, what is their time frame? I don't know if they're in the, like we were, um, mm -hmm. if they're in that pre-application period. I don't, I don't he, have a clue. He, he didn't, didn't say talk. anything. He, I mean, he had a conversation, but he didn't say where they're at as far as the time frame goes. So it's in the letter he's he's saying December twenty second, twenty twenty one. Oh. That would still be ninety days. You know, they could still be in that pre application period. Oh. And so they aren't even really fighting a real application yet. But I don't know. I know nothing about it. Yeah. He didn't tell you except where they were in the process? No. Okay. Where I was in the middle of working, and you know, yeah, yeah. I listened for a Let's while, and then it's like, oh, the cow has to get on the trailer now. <laughs> can you just <laughs> can you just get a hold of Bruce two two nine? You know, I gave him the phone number and the extension, and he was and very Bruce, nice. Thank you, thank you for peace. Yeah, it was nice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm wondering if you know we as a town might. I mean, th these are their, this is their language. And if we as a town want there to be more input into siting and more um, factors considered when siting these towers, I mean, if that's something we want to say, and then, you know, whether we give it to Kim or, you know, pass it along to the town or, you know, whatever, I mean, that's, you know, that might be something we want to do as a town. I'm not sure if these three points or four, you know, it's one premise or as telecommunications de develop in our state, several restrictions must be observed. You're never going anywhere if you say several restrictions must be observed. You know, it's, you know, several factors must be considered or, you know, don't start with restrictions. Um, so, but if we, you know, if we want to kind of come up with some ideas or thoughts or putting something together, we can do that. I'm not sure, um, I, 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 I don't know what the purpose of this is, and I'm not sure if, you know, just saying these three things accomplishes the purpose that the town of Worcester wants. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm, I'm thinking that this sort of serves their purpose is they're trying to make a statement. Yeah. So trying to get support. Why not let them make a statement? Why do you sign on to it? Because you're going to need your own independent. 
there may be a, a case where you'll need a different thought process. This is pretty general. Yeah. Well, uh, eyes are hurt. If it's general, it doesn't do anything. Well, it's specific enough to say that uh, town ordinances, zoning, and town plans must be followed. Well, they're and, hoping that would happen. And and trying to get things changed. I don't know. Happen. I don't know that we stand behind that as a town. Okay. Oh, right. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, we had a robust discussion here oh, a while ago about the specifics of of one cell tower proposed location and the process of yep. involving the towns. And I think it would be useful uh, to pick up that thread again and to have a discussion about, okay, should towns have a veto power over all cell towers? Should they be able to specify places where they are or are not permitted? Should the towns be involved in the balancing of public good of expanding a cell service versus uh, possible detriment of having these towers? Uh, I, I think there's a whole range of positions that could be taken. The towns had a lot of say back in the day and yeah. a lot of that was taken away yeah. when that, that new uh, we, I think when, when Governor Shumlin was here and they were moving ahead with the Connect Vermont or whatever yeah actually it was when the the feds uh, 2006 2000 whenever it was yeah when that um, change to the Code of Federal Regulations went through right. that was a huge that was a seismic shift from yeah. The way I understood how it played through. And, but and I remember though when they initiated, they put all this money together and said, "We're just gonna, we're gonna do, we're gonna connect, you know, bring fiber everywhere and towers everywhere." And I um, mean, we, we had when I was in Harvard, we had an influx of towers up there. Our, our attempts to do that, and uh, some made it in, some didn't. So what, what we're kind of, what they're kind of asking, what we're talking about is going back to the way it was. Well, we may not be able to because of federal regulations, yeah. as well as state statutes have to be changed. Well, it sounds like to me that the psych boards are comfortable with signing on to this letter, so we should yeah. probably just shout. Yeah. Sounds like it maybe. That's yeah. right. And yeah. Carl's idea of, of having this discussion again is going to happen naturally because you, that's going to be your town plan. Amendment. That's the town plan. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. So but, it sounds like the concept here is not one that we feel comfortable about signing on to because it says things that we may not believe as a town. Right. That the town, you know, planning commission is supposed to be involved. We we sound like we, that might not work for us. In town ordinances, we don't, you know, may may not favor that as far as mm -hmm. cell towers go. And public good may may, may be something that we're not interested in. Or more <laughs> more interested in developers' profit. I get just, it. Just, just, just to be clear, public good is a legal term of art. So. Um, yeah, okay. As used in the telecommunications statute, so, um, um, yeah. It's fine. I'm public good is what drives it, but what does public good really mean? Public good yeah. doesn't mean what you know you or I might think public good. Right. Means. Yeah. And so, just to be clear, the red flag that I I raised was. Um, primarily, you know, do we want the town to be the ones that decide on these locations, yeah, or yeah. do they have increased input? These guys are saying. Both, actually, and I'm not sure we agree with both. I mean, it's not really our argument right now. I mean, we could spend a lot of time yeah. just on the semantics and stuff, but it doesn't. Yeah. I mean, we were just going to be a neighbor in town, a favor, and wasting time. I was just trying to be a good neighbor. Yes, yeah. yeah. being a good neighbor. Thank I, you and for that. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you and did then, your best. That's how I run my farm. And that's there may be some other time <laughs> when, when we want to sign on a, to a statement. Yeah, they but they, but uh, yeah, we may need them, but they probably will not be uh, on board with our concept. That's fine. Okay, so let's move on. This could be all right. Yeah, it's getting late. Yep. Um, let's see, we did the. Oh, here we go. We did the other business. Yeah. We're all done except for personnel matters. <laughs> right. uh, town administrator report, do we want to just leave that? Oh, anything we'll we need to talk there. about there? <laughs> um, we did the resolution. Oh, there's a. The, School board vacancy in the East Montpelier yes. slot. Um, right. I'm I'm comfortable to with thanking the school board for the notification and uh, leaving the appointment in their hands. Thank I am too. Yeah. Thanks for consulting with us. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yep. And what yeah. about the Vermont Homeowners Assistance Program, which is before that? That's actually a fascinating program. Yeah. And we've now got notification that two residents are in the queue already mm -hmm. oh. uh, and it's it's one of those things where 
the ARPA funds or the state ARPA funds are being used to uh, pay things that we may actually appreciate because it may keep a few people out of tax sales, mm -hmm. which would be nice, especially if oh, yeah. the pandemic is causing them to be under that right. possibility. Right, that's great. Right. Uh, so um, we don't have to take any action on that? No, that they really, they just started to uh, blanket the state with notices about this that. program. Yeah. And I think, and I think they're, yeah, I think they're encouraging, um, you know, um, creditors to advise their, you know, customers of the program. Yeah. Yeah. So we know of folk who tend to fall behind, we might want to let them know. We've already put it up on the website. Uh, Ruby. And as I said, if it helps. Good. Yeah. The, it's all good. The yeah. tax sales stuff is going to be bad this summer, and if this helps limit that I badness, yay. You have to do them. Mm -hmm. um, and you want me to give a treasure selection committee update? Well, I would think they'd like one. Okay, so um, we, we narrowed it down to five candidates. We interviewed three on Friday afternoon, and we tried to interview the other two but we had eight actually, and we mixed. Could this be an executive session or? No, I'm not no. going to say anything. We're not saying okay. any names. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we had eight applicants. Three of them we decided that weren't going to work. So we got rid of those. And then we had five left. And um, Bruce contacted them. We gave Bruce some times where we could do the interviews. Bruce contacted the five. We conducted three interviews on Friday afternoon, and we had two more scheduled for today. The, of the three interviews that we had on Friday, one we crossed off, and two we um, want to move on to the select board for the second interview. And the two interviews that we had today, neither one of them showed up. No, we got stood up. <laughs> so Amy and I got stood up. We're not going to be happy about that. We sit around here for two hours. Yeah, well, Amy and I have been here since before four, so we're wow. moving into our yeah. sixth hour for yeah. You but weren't here before four, before five. <laughs> you got notified oh, right. about the first one. That's right. We got here at five. I, I was feeling bad for you, and now I'm not. Oh, okay. Sorry, I, I forgot that one of them actually did call. One of them, but I mean, it was a flaky, you know, sorry, a group call. But Isn't that being judgmental? Okay, it was okay. It was weird. And then the second one was just just didn't stood show. Us up. <laughs> didn't show at all. We got no phone call. So what what we did us. is we said that they have 24 hours to initiate contact with us, and then we're going to close the interview process. Mm -hmm. So in the, you know they could have been some they got in an accident coming yeah. here. They could have had. A I think that they had a head on with each other. <laughs> <laughs> you are definitely getting slapped at. <laughs> So that was that's what's going on. So there's two mm -hmm. great candidates that we recommended to the select board. Okay, great. Hey. Uh, Good. Fantastic. Thank you. Makes yeah. me happy. Yeah, I can tell you, you'll have a hard time deciding between the two. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, we've, we've traditionally had some of our most knocked down, drag out battles in cases yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway. So do you want to do anything? Silly, like say when your committee makes its recommendation, how you want to handle it at the select board level? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, we like the candidates to come in to meet the select board. And I'd like Rosie to be here at that time because she was on the committee also. And um, that's what we have to do. We've also um, asked Rosie to check on references, and she's doing that right now. And the references she checked for these two have turned out to be really Fantastic. good. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. You do any, and then when you get down to it, you do a background check? I guess. Do you? Do you? I would talk with the league about that. Yeah. Oh, we haven't had before. The, um, only, the yeah. only thing I can say is we really got to do it soon. Yeah. Well, I've just mentioned it's, it's a town treasurer position. It's very important to do a background check. Because yeah. yeah. they're going to be bonded, too. So you really need to do that. Oh, no, we'll that sounds like reasonable due diligence. Yeah, that's reasonable. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. The only thing I can say though is we got to do it in a timely way, and we want to let these people know quickly. So can I mean? So a background check can be done like that. Oh, yeah. But yeah. and you can also make the offer conditioned on the background check. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So when are they going to come and meet the select board? Would that be at the next meeting, or do we need a special? I don't know they have a special meeting. Okay. Yeah, we got so much on our agenda. Yeah. Now. Think, yeah. So when are you going to be around? And when are you going to be around? 
Well, <laughs> I'm going to be around for the next, for the rest of this week and next week. I'll be around till Tuesday of this next week. I'll be around. So when is your committee making its? Well, pass we have that 24 hours. Yeah. We've already recommended the two. Oh, so you don't need to meet again no. to make a recommendation. We're not no, we've already again. done that. So do you want to set a meeting for next Monday? Yes. Okay. Sure. Yes. Let's do it. During the day, evening, afternoon? It's got to be towards the end of the day. Afternoon? Can we do it at like five or something? I'd like to do a five. five. Do it in between, I was going to say, do it in between milkings. Uh, well, I've got people that can cover the milking, but there's other stuff I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> and when you make it at four o'clock in the afternoon, it's like, ugh. Okay. No, nice. So do you want to do the one hour routine again? I don't think they need that much time for this, no. do they? Just to meet uh, us? Whatever you want. Um, 45 minutes to so, You think that we even, like the select board, after, after they already had, had grilled, I mean, this is, okay, whatever. We're all new to these people. Yep. Yeah, so it is a new, because yep. yep. they're going to have different questions. This yep. is why, yeah. I know, yeah. I kind of want to do the interviews because everyone has different perceptions. So we should do like, I mean, I guess my That's the only is, thing was the wait, questions. Yeah. yeah. Judas has a question. Yep. Yeah. Should we have, do you have, should we have standard questions? That's what we're, we're just moving on to that. And Amy and I had already talked about this somewhat. We need to have standard questions. And what works really well is if you assign the questions to every member. Yeah. So we need so to you, add, like, so you always do number six. Yeah. And you always do number seven. So we need to be like half an hour. Ahead of time to right. put that together, and and just remember, it's the select board that's going to be making the hire. Well, you have a list of que you have a list yeah. of questions you already asked, so would we be asking the same ones over yeah. again? Um, we should see the list of questions. Okay. Yeah. Well, why don't we meet before the meeting, and we can go over the questions that we've already asked. Just and then we'll we'll have to. Can you can e yeah, email them to yeah, us? Yeah, I can send them to you. Because uh, I'd like to have those, and I might be able to think of a couple, two, three questions before we come in. Good. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. what time do you want to meet to, like, do you want to meet at 445 so we have 15 minutes to talk about the questions? Or I do you want to meet at 5 and then have the interview scheduled for 6 and, or? Sure. 530 or something. 530. Okay. Yeah. So, meet at 5 and then the interview starts at 530. Yeah, gotcha. okay. and the next one, we can, we can put it off at 630 mm -hmm. for the second mm -hmm. one if you want. Mm -hmm. It gives us an hour. To interview, interview, talk about right impressions, and then yeah, it's yeah. fine. Let's yeah. do it that way. So, so are you going to want it to be a hybrid meeting, or do you want it in person? I think I it like should it be in person. person, so everybody gets a yeah. sense. Judith, can you do in person next Monday? Um, at five, um, I will do my best to get there. Um, but but uh, wait a minute. The inner, the people that are interviewing the select board members can zoom in. The person that's coming needs to be in person. They're getting, that's getting interviewed. So you're saying that it's okay if Judith can't make it. Judith yeah, can so you zoom just in, zoom in. in. The, the that's fine. Issue. Yes. Right. Okay. So but realize that we have to advertise it as a public meeting as a hybrid meeting. Yes. So it's a couple extra steps. Mm -hmm. And is there any reason to go into executive session during the interview process? That's what we did. Um, yeah, I would think you would. Yeah. 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 yeah, we did that. So okay. if it's a hybrid model, people, I mean, nobody's going to tune in anyway, but if they did, you would just kick them off like immediately for their interview? Like, yeah. just yeah. okay, gotcha. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So 5, 5, 30, 6, mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Gotcha. On Monday. Okay. Okay. I, that's what we gotta do. We have to get. So, do you want to stare at Orca right away and say, "Don't come next week"? Don't come next. <laughs> Don't come next week. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm gonna be executive session. Has to be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now what? Well, oh, and, and you'll you'll send us their resumes and so on. Yeah. Yeah, we have those, and we'll send around the questions. Yeah. Now. Yep. That way everyone has a chance to look at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Okay. So if we're waiting 24 hours, I'll send something out on Wednesday. Yes. When we're clear. We're waiting 24 hours. That could, if we, I don't think these people are going to get interviewed just because what's happened. But we got to leave that possibility open. Are you going to give us something formal or is it just going to be oral? 
formal on the two interviews? That's on the re recommendation. Do you want to You're going to words? put it in writing or not? One <laughs> sentence. We'll One sentence. Yeah. Okay. We'll put it in writing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We already have did the motion. We have it recorded. It's in our minutes. And we can pass that. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, just your question about timing, Bruce. Uh, we've heard from the committee that there are at least two candidates that uh, they want to recommend to us yeah. to interview. So would it make sense to go out to them tomorrow and schedule those interviews for next Monday? And if either of the two who did not show up today come with something that the committee accepts and, and they interview them and decide to recommend them as well, then we could just add a third interview that night. Sure. That we would be that on the calendar of everybody right sure. away. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. yeah. Because if they call us within 24 hours and then we, for some reason, decide to interview them, we're going to have to interview them right away. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. I don't think that's likely. That's not going to happen, but. <laughs> but that's okay. Okay. So I think we've done all that. So the next thing is a personnel matter. And that means Orca needs to go away. So, for the following, I move to go into executive session under 1 BSA 313A3, the appointment or, eva employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee. Uh, of course, this is provided that we shall make a final decision to a hire or appoint the person in an open meeting and explain the reasons for the final decision in the open meeting. So, can I ask a quick question? So yeah. Are you going to do this individually for the three topics, or are you going to do it as one? My intention is three? to do it for the following okay. discussions, uh, the following personnel discussions, the rest of the meeting. So all three. three topics. Yeah. Yes. So did somebody second it? Second. second. Oh. <laughs> all in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.